welcome, welcome, welcome to yet another episode of the New to Retro Review Podcast. I am your host, Tony, aka One Big Boss, and this is episode nine. And today I am joined by a very special guest, all the way from Hawaii, the man who runs the number one podcast in Hawaii, Mikel Casanova, my good buddy. How you doing, dude? I'm doing good, man. <laughs> it's 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 weird for me because I'm rarely on the other side of the the podcast where I'm inter, inter well I'm being interviewed so or or on someone else's show. So it's an honor to be here. Thank you, thank you. Dude, well, dude, I mean, like you do freaking great work. Like you know, like I, like I said, when you because like, you you had me and the row guys on like last year, I think it was right. Yeah, yeah. And, yep, then, and then uh, earlier this year too. Yep, and we, yep, when you had me come back and everything like that for uh, the big talk we had about like games and stuff. Yeah, that that was a mm-hmm. fun, that was a fucking blast. But like that was yeah, I thought <laughs> it was like you know what, I'm starting to do this thing now and everything. I'm getting back in the swing of things. I got to have you on here because you've been so nice to me to have me on your show twice. <laughs> I feel like a horrible human being if I didn't invite you. <laughs> Uh, oh it's kind of, man it's kind, of, it's kind of like you know like when like when you're dating somebody and they get you a gift and you don't get them one for like for whatever reason and you're just like oh shit i know i'm gonna get uh, someone's gonna be mad at me later on <laughs> 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 but uh no I, again dude uh, glad you could take the time out because like, i get i know there's like a huge time i mean it's it's a nine o'clock here for me it's like what like four, four? o'clock there for you or or something here yeah mm. so all right so i, I never I guess, sleep uh, so it's fine <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Like, you, like you, you don't sleep anyway. You're like me. You never sleep, no matter what time it is. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I guess we should get started. So, dude, like you've been you've been doing YouTube for like stuff for a long time. Like, how did that get started, and what worked into like getting the podcast going? Like, how did that all come together? Well, I've been doing. It's hard to believe for me, but like I've been doing YouTube for about six years now. So I started off um, with an entirely different channel where I was just like uploading uh, Street Fighter Three Third Strike like matches from yeah. like the from like the uh, 360 and the uh, PS3. So I would just upload that, and then I got to a point where I was like, man, I want to kind of talk about games and stuff like that. So like I I did like a lot of us did. I had the super jank phone camera, and you know try to do my best with unboxings and stuff like that. And then I just, um, I got to a point where I was like, you know, I kind of want to do something more with this. I want to be able to, you know, talk about it, but not come across like I'm just MacGyvering everything. So, <laughs> you know, which I, I failed at cause I still MacGyver everything, <laughs> but <laughs> you know how that is, Hold but on, you know, yeah. it's like, it's it's one of the things where I just um you know little by little I just started investing you know better camera better you know audio equipment and uh, I'm still not where I want to be but it, it's just you know little things I've done over the years and I I would always look at different people like Review Tech USA definitely one of the biggest inspirations for me because I remember back you remember back when he didn't even put himself on camera. It was that's, just gameplay. That's right. He did like a lot of like Counter Strike and Modern Warfare and like all kinds of other like cool like first person games and yeah, everything like that back at the time. Yeah, that was like when he was like a smaller, a much smaller channel. Yeah, like I, I um was just inspired by that, and um then I want to say like twenty twenty sixteen is when I started like doing reviews for stuff on like Amazon and whatnot, which I I got my feet wet there. And I was like, man, if I can reach out to companies and, and review stuff on Amazon, then let me see if I can do something more with that. So I just started, you know, I built my website from Wix and then I just started like reaching out to companies and, you know, little by little, it just started coming together. And then also in that same year, 2016, 2017, I um, had a friend, former best friend, former best man at my wedding keyword former <laughs> um he um he wanted to do a podcast because he used to you know listen to a lot of them from joe rogan to um was it the windows central podcast which is boring but you know he wanted to do something like that where we talked about tech and games and, and different things going on and so uh i bought a lot of equipment for podcasting to do that with him and uh from 2016 2017 we ran the show um, I basically had no reason to be there because he just wanted to talk and for me to just say, mm-hmm, yes, mm-hmm, yep. And so <laughs> I, <laughs> so I ended up, um, you know, I got tired of it. I was like, man, I want to do my own show. So I did a pilot episode 
I called it cast speaks and I just talked about like uh, different things like the, the Amazon situation where they were canceling people's, uh, was it uh, NES classic and super NES classic. Oh, I started yeah. talking about stuff. Yeah, dude, it didn't even feel like it was that long ago, but like, I just started talking about that stuff. And then eventually, you know, him and I, we fell out just because he didn't like the fact that uh, to him, he said I was growing faster indiv- individually than collectively. And um, I was like, dude, I'm not doing anything. I got 10 viewers. What is that? How is, how is that rapid growth? But we fell out over that. And um, so I was like, you know, I got all this equipment. I might as well just do something with it. So, you know, I started um, the first couple of episodes of Cast Nova Podcast. And I, I did the rebrand. I um, was literally just reaching out and... Uh, I literally, I, well, when I started off, I was just talking about, you know, tech and games and talking about games I'm playing and tech I'm using and stuff I'm interested in gaming news and whatnot. Then I was like, you know what? I want to get some YouTubers on. So I started reaching out to various YouTubers and it's kind of funny and I might get some flack for saying this. Um, but I find it easier to get celebrities than to get YouTubers. Really? It's the, it's the weirdest thing. It's the weirdest thing. Like youtubers and streamers content creators you know i know a lot of great people that are content creators youtubers streamers like yourself like the team at row you know many others but a lot of folks are like divas in <laughs> every sense of the word i mean you subbed you got i mean views do you get what's your reach ah uh, yes the number uh, game yeah like i do i, I freaking hate it i freaking hate the number game but like when it comes to celebrities, I think a lot of them they're just like, hey, this is free publicity for me, so let me just hop on the show. So, but um, yeah, so I started reaching out to uh, various, um, you know, YouTubers, content creators, and then a lot of them that present themselves a certain way on their platforms, they're not like that offline, which has been very, um, how can I say this without getting in trouble, uh, demoralizing. Ah. <laughs> Dis- disheartening to see how a lot of people are um and from there i just was like okay let me start reaching out and doing something else because i got tired of talking to content creators so i did i went to the pol- political scene started having political commentators on then i was like there's too much drama surrounding politics let me get the hell out of that <laughs> so <laughs> you know like i can't say anything without somebody getting offended Sounds like modern day. But anyway, <laughs> I went on to um, uh, reach out to voice actors. So I reached out to my fir- first voice actor uh, I reached out to was Griffin Burns, who's um, he's a uh, devil man. He's Akira Fudo in uh, Devil Man Crybaby. Crybaby. So I reached out to him because he was doing uh, Shining Resonance, refra- uh, Shining Resonance Refrain, I believe the remake. Uh, so I interviewed him and uh, became really good friends with him. And then it just kind of opened doors. Like right after him, I had Dorothy Fawn and then I had Richard Epcar and it just, it kept going and going and going to like, it just became a thing. Like people were expecting me to always interview the voice actors and that was fine and dandy. It was fun, but I got to a point where I'm like, I don't want to be just that guy. I want to do something more. So I just started reaching out to the game industry and then built connections with their, you know, Kathy from Capcom, um, many other people, you know, in the industry, creator of Halo, like I got him on, really good friends with him. And it just kept going and going from there. And, you know, I just like to spice it up. Like one week I got a, I got an industry personnel. Next minute I got a developer. Next minute I got a voice actor. I got a composer. I've got a content creator. Like I, I just want it to be a sense of where you never know what you're going to get on my show. And it, you know, just have something, a little bit of something for everybody, you know? Yeah. Like and you, you have variety in your works and, you know, a lot of people are like, you know, variety streams or variety, anything that's kind of hard to get a following with because people might only tune in for one certain thing. But in my opinion, if you, if you stick with one thing, depending who you are, cause I know some people that they can stick to doing the same thing over and over, no problem. And they love it, but other people mm-hmm. get burnt out from it. But like you are, you're all over the place, but you're also hitting your marks on what you're supposed to do with that. And you're nailing it. Dude, especially like if you're a creator that's like, say you're a streamer and you're only streaming one game, 
that is a quick way to get burnt out. And if you do, you try to deviate and do anything else, your audience is going to be like, what the hell is this? I didn't sign up for this. I've gone through that. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, it's um, it, variety. It, it keeps you being able to do this long term. And I think for a lot of people that get into content creation, they don't look at this from like, like you and I, we talk about this a lot, you know, longevity and looking at this from a business perspective, mm. you have to have something for longevity. You know, you can't be that person that's just playing, you know, uh, whatever the, I don't even know what the trending games are. Okay. Well, yeah, let's, like, let's so say like, just speeds run like resident evil games or speed runs, mega man games or speed runs, you know, classic beat em ups and everything like that. You know, like, you, yeah, yeah. Like that, that's all well and good. And like you said, like you'll, you can burn yourself out. Like, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love resident evil three. That's like my favorite game of all time. But if I was to play that game every day on stream for seven hours, like some streamers can do, which again, to any stream that can play the same game for seven hours, like five days a week, hats off off to you man because that's fucking godlike work you're doing but me i just like i don't want to hate my favorite game i need to break from it i want to play all yeah. the stuff that really makes me happy and i you know and i hope and kind of like when you stream too it's like you hope that the happiness that you give off from the uh channel makes other people happy and go out and try these things yeah yeah you know it's like it's really easy like i i uh one of my favorite games is uh what is it uh final fantasy 14 mm. i absolutely love it and you I were streamed hardcore on that, dude. I got hooked on it, and then it got to a point. <laughs> so, so there's a reason. Like, I don't really stream it. I, I haven't streamed a game in I want to say almost two months now. And the reason for that, several reasons. One, there was a lot of drama in my community over the fact that I was streaming that uh, and not doing a variety of other stuff. And when I would stream stuff, like I would ask my community, like, "What do you want me to stream?" They'd make suggestions, and they never show up. And so it got to a point where it's like, okay, I'm playing a game I want to play and you guys aren't happy and couldn't support. And I even had people threatening to financially not support me and my work because I was playing that game. So I told them to kick rocks, take your money and kick rocks. <laughs> and then I had, then I had people who were demanding I play something else. And when I would play the thing that they want to play, want me to play, they'd never show up. So I was getting miserable trying to placate. And to, and I think that's another discussion right there is the struggles of trying to maintain a community and your sanity. I can't please because everybody. It's, right? You, you can't. And I, I got to a point I was super miserable. I didn't want to play games anymore. Um, they wanted me to play what was trending, wouldn't show up. And then when I did anything I wanted to do, it was always complaints. So lately, like well, for the last week or so, I just haven't. Well, last, with the exception of yesterday, uh, as of this recording, I haven't um, really streamed. I took a break from it. And then it's kind of crazy because I look in my metrics and I'm like, wow, I took a, what, a week and a half, two weeks off and you guys fell off like that. It's, this is a hard game, a hard field to be in. Oh, yeah. No, it, it totally is. Like you, it, It's almost like it's really hard to kind of find where to be most yeah. of the time because it's just you look at how everybody like they want certain things and they're only here and i guess it's okay if you're here for certain things but don't get mad when those things aren't there right like yeah. i watch a lot of youtubers out there and i watch them play a lot of different stuff maybe it's because i'm a variety streamer myself and i like variety maybe that's why i do it but i also mm -hmm. like the personality like when i watch you know like the guys from your video games i might not like yeah. all the games they play but i love like the fact that they have like such great personalities they're funny on stream it reminds them of me and my buddies which is why i have them over to stream you know and mm -hmm. you know same with like you know guys like uh, matt mcmuscles he's always great with his videos that he does and his streams you know i love mm -hmm. i love those guys they, they all do very good stuff but you know people have to understand that you know just because you're donating money doesn't mean you can dictate what people do now maybe that's like what a patreon is for i guess like you know if you say it's like hey like you know if you're a member here you're a tier two lister you guys get to pick when i'm going to stream on friday night here's a here's a list of games uh, or if you have one specifically let me know like if you you know donate sixty dollars or whatever you know i know some people do do that i know like with uh speaking again matt mcmuscles with his uh with his uh flop house uh series and everything you know, everything that he does like uh the what happened series mm -hmm. everything like you know it's whoever bids he goes yeah like take a look at this and he does and he does the research and he fucking kicks ass at it so you know i i think people have to understand that streamers aren't robots like we're 
we're people that yeah. enjoy what we do and we're doing it in hopes that you guys can just come hang out and forget about life troubles for a while kind of thing like a cheers thing forget about your troubles mm-hmm. all that jazz that, that's what i try to do on my streams because i i notice that like for sometimes i have a, a hard time myself keeping people interested um mm-hmm. i have i have a couple of dedicated people that always show up and i always appreciate them uh, greatly for that but like when i was playing halo for a bit a lot of people weren't really into it and now that i've been playing a lot of it people are like oh it's actually kind of fun i had my best friend come over and play it and totally different mm-hmm. like people were loving it like and i think a lot of people like when i just get angry and i get i get killed in these things because i have like good reactions <laughs> um but that's, that's the thing i really try to keep it like you know people happy and you can't please everybody but you know if you don't do what you love it starts feeling like work and yeah. that's when you really start feeling like man i this is why I left my job or this is why I did this. Cause you know, it better mm-hmm. than anybody like you were, because like, that's the thing a lot of people have to understand is like, you're not where you are now just from the flip of a switch. You were working a, a regular job too, a good paying one, but it was, it was caught. It was taxing on you. <laughs> that job nearly killed me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, 17 hour work days, six days a week, eight hours on the seventh and doing this full time and, you know, podcast well podcasting, streaming and content creating full time damn near lost my marriage because I had no time. I, I had to get out of it, but yeah, I was making really good money and I have a lot of people that still tell me I'm crazy for what I did. A lot of family that does not support my decision to go into this full time. But like I, I told them I needed to know if I could do it and I would, you know, I don't want to be one of those people that's like, what if, what if, because one of the things of working at the hospital I worked for was, you know, going to meet all the terminally ill people that had, you know, you sit and talk to them and they, they talk about things they wish they did, or they wish they had the time to do this. They wish they had the courage to go and do this and that. That stuff gets to you. <laughs> it gets to you hardcore. And it, um, it, it did a number on me. So I was like, man, I need to, I need to make some changes. I need to see if I can do this. I need to make more time for my my wife and, and, you know, just live life. Cause I didn't feel like I was living life. I felt like I was a cog in the wheel and, and all the people that say that they want to work for themselves and they want to be their own boss. I, my question to you is, can you keep yourself accountable? Because working for yourself is not an easy thing. Nope. It is definitely not. I've been doing photography for like over 10 years and I've only gone full time right? within the like last six. So it's like, I know how tough it can be. Like, people think being your own boss is like magical and awesome and you can make your own yeah you make a lot of your own time but then you realize you're a one-man army like mm-hmm. you don't have i mean some people like eventually with photography i have now like they'll get more people on board to like hire them and stuff and they become more of a boss than anything else but like it's just you you're the one doing your own designs your your, your designs for your cards you're doing this you're doing that you're doing your editing you're staying up till all hours of the morning and stuff um that's how it works and you know you got to put in the time you're working almost double what you were doing before and the paycheck might not honestly be there sometimes or it might not feel like it's enough but again if you're feeling that you're better mentally then it was a you know it's a chance you got to take sometimes and for you 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 know like you did and you know you yourself like you you'd gone through cancer as well and you got a second mm-hmm. chance on life and you didn't fucking waste it I, I, in my personal opinion you have definitely not wasted that second chance <laughs> i took the ball and ran with it i was like i only got this chance let me do it let me just go ahead and go through it and see how i can go how far i can go and and one of the things like a lot of people think when you're working for yourself like you got all this money and all these opportunities and it's like no like it, it, it's kind of funny because I actually had a conversation with a friend the other day and they were telling me, they're like, man, I wish I could do what you're doing. Like you get to sleep as much as you want and you work when you want and you know, you can take off all these weeks. I'm like, no, I work all the time. I take off that's money not being made. Like it's, it's not easy. Yeah, it isn't. And like, you know, dude, like you've got like so much going on in your life and everything and you still make time to do these reviews these streams and like that's the thing people people have to understand that too like there's more to life than you don't see behind the camera like and and just even setting up for a video you've literally got to like set up everything you got to make sure your lighting works your tech works all this stuff and both of us know that tech isn't always reliable because it works one day and the next day you're just like nah this looks important to you we're gonna fuck with you for a while (laughs) that windows update the the most inopportune time (laughs) oh 
Oh my god, that that's ha- that's hit us on the row a couple of times too. Like JJ will have a major update and it like resets all of his like settings for OBS and his mic settings and stuff, and it's just like a whole hour or more so to like fix that and yeah. Oh, uh, it's just it's it's just. I mean, hell, we had that tonight, <laughs> like before the podcast. Oh my yeah, god! You know, you get those Windows updates that just fuck up one entire like your camera's not going to work because need a critical update or uh your mic's not going to work or any of the it's just pe- people don't see that they don't see that behind the scenes thing and they think it's easy where they'll think oh you're just playing video games you're just playing in front of a computer or in front of a camera yeah okay think that <laughs> yeah like think that but it's literally more to it than that because like you know that you're also doing fucking development and shit yeah like you, you got to go in and like you've got to You've got to edit. You've got to find the right, you know, music to use. You've got to, you know, make your overlays. You got to import this. You got to import that. Like, it's just, there's so much. Because like, what a lot of people don't understand is, like, when, when people look at, like, YouTubers that are successful, like, super, super big-time ones, they look at guys like, you know, Markiplier, Jacksepticeye, and everything, you know, the uh, guy, Maximilian. People don't mm-hmm. understand that they have editors. Yeah. Like, their streams and their content bring in so much money that they can hire editors to come in and do all these like compilation videos or everyday videos. So Mm -hmm. that takes a lot of time off them. But again, they had work to get there and they're paying people. So that's the thing. That's money out of their pocket. So they got to make sure that they're still playing these games for seven, eight hours, everything, you know, and, Mm -hmm. and some of these streamers, some of them have kids. And it's just like, how the fuck do you do it? Like, do you guys like, like just inject coffee into your veins? Like, fuck. (laughs) I mean, I don't drink coffee or soda or any energy drinks or anything like that. So I'm like, I start getting tired after three hours of streaming by myself. When my friends are here, it's a totally different story. But like, shit, <laughs> like some people just do it great. And like I said, you know, when uh, one of the reasons why I loved your podcast, like before coming on to the row and like sorry, before we, the row came on, you know, I listened to a couple of your things. And I was like, this guy's got like a Joe Rogan feel to him. He lets you just talk there's a lot of fun a lot of laughter it's very relaxed and that's the kind of stuff that i like to be a part of i don't like super scripted things but this is a podcast and that's and i'm glad we became good friends after too because like again the, the work you just pump out is just amazing with these podcasts and the, the content creation the reviews and it's like i tell people all the time like i see people like bitching and complaining on fucking facebook or people that i know personally and they're just like yeah i don't know about this game that's coming out and i was like i got a guy you should listen to and then and I'll send them mm-hmm. your reviews if it's a game if it's a game that they're talking about. <laughs> Dude, I remember when we um I think we, we hit it off on that episode when I had uh you and a row on. Oh yeah, because I was like, pretending to do fucking coast <laughs> the whole time and shit. I know, right? Like, hold on. Oh, okay, we're good. <laughs> it's just like, oh hold on guys, hold on. Oh, let's fucking go. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I, I remember JJ and Ali had, like, no fucking idea, like, I was going to do that shit. Like, they're used to me doing it, but I don't think they expected me to do it actually on the podcast and stuff. I, I, was, I, was, I think I probably gave them a heart attack. They're like, oh, shit, Tony's going to blow it for us. I mean, yeah, we do it, but we don't want people to think he's a cokehead. We got a, this cokehead on our channel. Like, what the hell? <laughs> and, yeah, like, we did because, like, you know, it was just it was fun to do that shit. And, like I said, when you've interviewed voice actors and other actors and people in the community and stuff it's always a lot of fun because you just know how to connect with people really well yeah dude i hate those scripted like have you you, you've been on some podcasts where it's super scripted to the t in the past i have uh some of them were okay scripted others were not and some of them didn't even like most of them didn't even get like published or anything like the person just didn't put them out and everything like that which uh, which how some of them carried their interview and everything. It was really, it was even hard for me to like make jokes and stuff like that. I'm usually a guy who finds funny in the dark type stuff and everything. I don't need no Sam Fisher goggles or anything. Like I know where to grab a joke from. <laughs> <laughs> just, just like that right there. <laughs> um, but like for some of them I've done, it's just like, shit, this is, this is rough. This is like when I was doing stand up and I was dying because nobody understood like the jokes about divorce and all the stuff that I was talking about. And everybody was looking at me like I was some kind of monster and shit. And I was like, oh my God, I'm, I'm like, really? Oh yeah. Like, no, I, I, I tried and uh, people like it was a younger crowd and they were like uh, in like college areas and they didn't, they didn't understand. Cause I come from a, like a, a, you know, like you and I had both like rough upbringings and stuff like yeah. that and everything. So, you know, we get through it by making jokes about, you know, 
the you know divorces and you know like you know harassment bullying all that kind of stuff you know mental illness which everyone's like oh you shouldn't make fun of mental illness i'm like i'm not making fun of it i'm using it to like get over things and stuff like when you're dysfunctional you know you function better and and people people don't understand like a lot of people who are the funniest comedians like i mean they've had the worst either upbringings or worse things happen to them and they're able to make the able to use comedy and self-deprecation to to deal with it and people just don't understand it so anyway i'm sorry continue continue oh no (laughs) no you're you're 100 right and that was the thing like i mean you know like i was uh you know like i i was just up there on stage and everything like that and you know i was i was dying and stuff but the guy who was running it after the show he came up and he's like no this is like you did really good like that was really good like you know you're talking about like your, your father's like uh, three divorces and your mother is like very ill and everything that was just like, like I, you know i i didn't laugh as much because i didn't want people getting mad but i thought that what you had was really good you're a person who knows like what is funny to the point where like you know there's things you don't joke about but there's things that are you got it and you know i was i was mm-hmm. actually there because my mentor was doing stand-up he, he just re- recently retired from working from the government and you know so we went and did that you know like he did stand up and people didn't understand his jokes either like he got some laughter there was one joke that he told that should have killed everybody all of his jokes were great but this one should have had mm-hmm. people on the floor because it was aimed at the younger generation um oh, how did it go so he said <laughs> <laughs> he said studies prove that the first thing in the morning that most uh people do is look over uh, uh what do you call that roll over and grab their phone how many mm-hmm. how many people wishes their iphone was a dick <laughs> and like a few people laughed like a few of the older crowd did but the younger generation just didn't seem to get it and i'm like that's fucking hilarious like if that was on comedy central everybody in the crowd would be dying bruh was, but there's so much truth to that though yeah, what's well, with this younger generation i mean like it's true like the first thing everybody does in the morning is check their freaking phones yeah anything and you know i i honestly don't because like i if I, I i used to when i was like a couple like you know like like six seven years ago i would but i realized i was like shit i'm not getting out of bed fast enough like i'll check all this stuff later because no like you know i would check real quick for other things and then i just get distracted and then mm-hmm. i was like i gotta get up i gotta do shit and everything like that i gotta like you know prep my house and do all this other kind of stuff so you know like it's just it, it's 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 a weird time to do any kind of comedy or Sometimes, like, content creation, again, like, you know, you have to find your mark. And, you know, I bombed on stage because people didn't understand, but a lot of people still liked my my jokes. And mm-hmm. whereas you were saying earlier, you know, you, ha- you had people who didn't understand what you were going for because it was an older generation that doesn't understand that this is the new way of entertainment. You know, gaming yeah. has now, like, replaced movies and TV and music, which were yeah. like the biggest things for, and, and even reading for like, you know, generations. And then, you know, going to like seventies and eighties and nineties and all mm-hmm. that stuff. So you're, you're in a position where you have the ability to make it, which you have. I know you say you're not where you want to be, but you're doing also what most people can't achieve at this point because you're also on a very oversaturated market and you're, and you're killing it for being, you know, for what's out there. I try. <laughs> no, you do. I, th- I think i think i fail more than that like okay so i look at it like this like i look at um and, and one of my friends uh, my best friend amy she always gets on me about this because she's like mikhail you're comparing you need to stop comparing and i'm like it's hard not to when you put out something like say you're reviewing a game or you're talking about something or you're streaming a game and then somebody you know or another content creator is doing the same thing and theirs blows up and then yours barely cracks 50 views like that fucks with you it does <laughs> yeah because that's like that's like you know doing like working your ass off at a regular like office job and everything like that you work your ass off on this and like the you know the corporate uh suck up and everything like that does half the work that you do and mm-hmm. gets that raise or gets that promotion or gets that praise from the boss and all you know all that jazz like that's and I'm the same way. Like, I, I don't like to play the numbers game, but when you're working your ass off and there's people out there that are doing half the work that you're doing and, and the work they're doing is wrong, like, like they're, they're wrong about a lot of stuff and they're very mm-hmm. sloppy with how they deliver it and they're still getting more views than you, there's something wrong with that. And I mean, we, we both know that the algorithm has a lot to blame for a lot of problems too, which is oh, yeah. <laughs> which is bad for, you know, people that like are artists that have like uh, mental, uh, like, you know, like, uh, like the, what do you call it? They're like sat, like depression and anxiety. Mm-hmm. Cause a lot of my artist friends are fucking good at what they do, 
but their stuff doesn't get seen that often so they like they want to quit or they don't like what they do and i was like no no no, you just gotta keep at it you gotta keep plugging it like you gotta keep posting you gotta keep putting it in these in these art sites and everything like that if it doesn't get chosen big deal i mean like you know i i've i've been entering my my photography in a cosplay magazine for a while now and for the last couple of years i've been in that in this magazine seven times mm-hmm. anything and and there's people in there that fucking do work that's like five times what i can do like they're their skills in Photoshop are amazing and their skills with a camera are amazing. But the fact that I still make it in, they see something. It's a, mm-hmm. it's a, it's a, it's a company that's run really well, I, I feel, but you know, I do understand that whole thing. Like I've done reviews and I've done this channel for years and sometimes like I'll get a video that gets caught up in something really good. And then other times I, I get nothing. Um, yeah. And it's just the way the algorithm works. If you're not getting a lot of people visiting you, it's not even <clears> so much the quality. It's just, no, we want to just bring traffic to you. It's just, that's the thing that really bugs me because like I'll, I'll see reviews, especially like, you know, from certain gaming journalist companies that are out there and I will see them do like a three minute review on something like, 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 like a big game. that's like, 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 let's say like cyberpunk or something like that. Right. Like this game's like 20 hours or whatever it is or something like 25, 30, whatever. Mm-hmm. You can't cover a fucking review in four minutes of a game like that without reporting all the bad shit that uh, can happen in games like that too. Like, you know, you gotta be thorough. And with your reviews, you're very thorough, but you're also, mm. um, you're also a guy who's gonna tell the truth. You're gonna, you're gonna say what you like about it. And then you're gonna say like, well, here's the flaws of what this is. And this is why I like your reviews because you're very truthful compared to other people. And I know that you get sent stuff from companies or anything. And a lot of people- I do always, pay, huh? I'm pay, I have paid reviews. <laughs> But that's the thing, like, you still find a way to tell people exactly how the game is going to be without breaking any kind of uh, confirmation, you know, like, the, the, like well, you know, a, a, bond, a contract that you have with these companies. You find mm-hmm. a way to save the things, and you're not hurting nobody, you're not trashing the developer, you do it the right way. And that's the thing that a lot of these big-time companies don't do. They miss a lot of what's bad about the game, and they praise the game, and then you realize people going out there and buying, uh, you know, whatever game it is, and then be like, wait a minute, there's a fuck ton of microtransaction in this. Why can't I buy, like, why can't I do anything? Mm-hmm. I just paid $60 for a game that was supposed to be a 9 out of 10, and it's crap. And again, that's why I love the reviews that you do, because you're just a very honest dude when it comes to that shit. I got, I did one review that got me a lot of hate so Ooh. i reviewed the last of us part two and you and i both know that had a lot of controversy it still does oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of controversy around that one so my approach to it was yeah i don't care for the story but let's talk about the gameplay now it's mechanically sound oh yeah like it works it does like, it, the game i think it's better than the first one it's in terms of its gameplay yeah, like I just don't care for the narrative, and because I had any positive, like opinion about it, I got major, major, major flack, and I'm like, look, I can't just say it's terrible, like because there's a lot of people that never even played the game, and they were just throwing out videos, and and, and that was the thing, and that's you know for the audience is listening, that's one of the things in this field that you know Tony and I see a lot of is a lot of people will throw out views, like videos for views. They don't even touch the game. And they've got opinions. I mean, I've even had experiences where one person I was cool with actually took my review, rearranged my footage, and did a, his own review. Damn. And and some of, like, a lot of my videos, I have a, a, a watermark stamp in one of the bottom corners, like bottom right, bottom left. And he left that in there. <laughs> he probably didn't see it, or like, if, like, well, no, yours aren't transparent, are they? No, they're they're full. No, I, I, uh, they, I, they're full on. Yeah, they're yeah, not transparent. Say, like, I do the same thing with mine. Like, I, I, I keep mine like right in the corner. I was just like, wow, really? <laughs> yeah, like, and like that's the thing. Yeah, like, review, like people were like were. Like review bombing the game before it even came out, and uh, uh, granted, yeah, there is a lot wrong with the game, but there is a lot of good about it. But you know, it was it was more so people were interested in the controversy than yeah. anything else. And it's just like you don't even you don't even care about the game. It's more the controversy, but you're working the game into it, which has nothing to do or anything. Like play the game first. 
No, I mean, like, you can have your impressions, of course, like, from what you see, but, you know. And, and that's one of the things that's kind of, like, thrown me off. It, and in many ways, it's kind of, it's it can be demoralizing because if you're positive, like, for me, like, you know, you and I, we're, we're gamers. Yep. We can we can be critical, but fair. If there's something we like about, like, to case in point, uh, Resident Evil 3 Remake. It was a good game it was a letdown in many areas especially when he cut a lot of content uh i understood why they did it because it it was pretty much compared to resident evil 2 remake it was more of the budget title yeah overall but you know for what it had it was good yeah, for, and yeah, God, yeah yeah you know like so for uh, if you're someone who can be objective and just say hey you know this is what i like this is what i didn't like but overall it's still a good game People don't care about that. They want the controversy. They want the outrage. And it seems like outrage is the thing that's selling. And I don't know, like I've seen so many channels blow up um, from all kinds of recent drama within the last two or so years. And th all they do is cover drama all the time. And they're like, yeah, I'm fighting the, the anti this side or the I'm fighting that side or I'm, you know, I'm shining light on this. And it's like, you're just being the opposite of the other outrage. <laughs> yeah, like you're literally just like ca like you're causing drama to talk about drama and everything. And yeah, there are so many of them out there that do that. They just feed off drama, and it's like, dude, it is boring. Like it's not. Some of the time, it's not even accurate. Mm -hmm. Like that, that. That's the bigger problem too. It's like the the spread of information is is false, and you know, again, that's why you know, I, I, as much as I love doing reviews, I hate the fact that like you know nobody sees them. Or takes him seriously because I'm not getting pissed off in him. I'm not like going like full angry Joe in him or anything. No, there's anything wrong with angry Joe. I, I love I love his content and everything, but he's like playing yeah. a character, everything. Yeah. But you know, same with like you know the angry video game nerd and Doug Walker. They're all playing characters when they do their reviews on stuff, but they still have excellent points to make about said games and everything. But that's the thing. It's just like at the end of the day, we're just trying to review a game to to save people money or tell people it's like, hey, no, go buy it. Like, dude, I still get flack for defending Marvel versus Capcom Infinite. Really? Yeah. Like when I like and, and I'm in a lot of like fighting game groups on, on like Facebook and uh like and I love when I meet good people to talk about these things with. But then you get that the like the assholes that just come out of the darkness and everything like that. And they're like, oh yeah, oh yeah, you're sucking Capcom's dick real good there. Oh yeah, you really fucking like that piece of shit game. I was like, look, I will fucking say that that game had a lot of fucking issues. I mean, that yeah. should never have been released in the fucking state that it was in. That roster was just a cut and paste of the third game. There was a lot of things that I did not like about that. But when it came right down to like things like the DLC characters, and you mm -hmm. had excellent fucking netcode, and some of the best fucking gameplay from a Capcom fighter in nearly a decade, mm -hmm. there's something to be said about that game. And if people had not fucking trashed it as bad as they did and actually spoke good about it and why it was good, which right now it's actually still selling. It's still selling very, uh, it's still selling to this day. People are still mm -hmm. buying that game a lot. So I'm hoping that Capcom like, you know, does revisit it in the future and we get another versus series because there was a lot wrong with the game. And I had talked about that back in the past and everything, but I also said of what's good and why you should buy the game at one point. You know, maybe you buy it on, like, the eventual sales because it wasn't doing so well, so Capcom, you know, had it on the, the sales. And you can get it, like, you know, really dirt cheap now two years later, and it's mm -hmm. just, like, I'll play it with my buddies and stuff, and it's just a lot of fun to play, but a lot of people give me flack for defending it. And I was just like, look, I, much like you, we review games to get the truth out there. We're not mm -hmm. kissing the ass of any fucking company out there. We're just telling the truth because we love certain property. Like, you and I are both Capcom dudes. Yep. Anything. So we're going to be critical about the franchise, or even about the company in general, because we want to see the games we love come back and we want to see new IPs bloom from a company. Now, granted, they're in much better standings than they were when they had that rumor about them getting bought out almost a couple of years. Oh, but, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. like yeah, <laughs> that Everybody's just like, shit, like who, who should get it? Should Nintendo buy them and everything like that? Should Sony buy them? You know, like that was it was all this like really crazy shit. And mm -hmm. I was just like, I hope they bounce back because I want their IPs to kind of stay on board where they've been for 30 plus years. And they mm -hmm. did. Like, you know, we got, we got, you know, Resident Evil 2 remake, Resident Evil 7. We got Resident Evil 8 coming out. We got Resident Evil 3. We got uh, Mega Man 11. We had that come mm -hmm. out. Um, There's a lot that came out from Capcom that did good. But if you're not critical, I think, you know, like, you, like I said, you can be critical. 
Just don't be a douchebag about stuff. Yeah. Anything. Uh, you can be critical, and like like I was with the with the Killer Instinct video I just put out. I I was just saying it's like, hey, I think it's a waste that Microsoft is sleeping on this. There are no other fighting games coming out other than like Guilty Gear, uh, and that's mm-hmm. cross platform. So that's technically not. You don't have to get a PS5 to play it. So, you know, they I, dropped the ball so hard with Killer Instinct. Yeah. By le- like it's been it's been seven years since the game debuted, and they only worked on it for like two years, and. You know, I, I I know it didn't do. I don't think it sold as well as they wanted, but it still did good. And I think where this up this new generation we're in now, like I said in the video, if they had launched a new Killer Instinct for this, you would have had me sold on buying an Xbox Series X. Uh-huh. And that's the thing. We're just very honest, and that's just what sucks. Like you know, you you try to be honest, and people like will call you like you know like you know a corporate dick sucker, or you know it's just like yep. oh you're a fanboy, or whatever the case may be. I hate that shit. Yeah, they do. And it's like, I, I, sometimes it makes you just not want to, not want to deal with it. Yeah. Like there, there's so many times where I'm over here like, man, why should I even bother? Like what, what game was it? It came out recently. Um, I did a review for Godfall for PlayStation five. Yep. I fucking love that game, but it seems like everybody is trashing it and it's all the same talking points. They're like, oh, it's boring, it's repetitive, it's this, it's that. I'm like, wait, it uses the Demon Souls, Dark Souls controls. Uh, there's no stamina gauge. You can play it co-op with up to three people simultaneously. Uh, you basically, it's dark Demon Souls meets Warframe because it's pretty much Warframe. Uh, meets, um, uh, freaking destiny. Shit, I didn't think and, of that. Huh. And it's got an incredibly deep combat system. The story, I mean, yeah, the story is whatever, but the gameplay is really good. And then a lot of the big, like, you know, and this is the part that gets me about content creators. Um, a lot of the bigger uh, creators that put out videos and reviews of it actually didn't play more than five hours of the game and i've had discussions with these people and i'm like really they're like well how many hours i'm like i beat it i put 30 hours into it and there's still more content you can do post game they're like yeah i got done after five hours i'm like you're doing a major disservice yeah like wasn't, (laughs) wasn't that a thing with a review in the last few years like somebody i think it was at ign didn't even finish the game and they still reviewed it yeah yeah was it um was that uh crap what was the name of that game was, was it the, the wasn't it Resident Evil 2 remake yeah 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 it was that one okay yeah like it was i think it was the scenario b that you know it didn't beat the main campaign is what it was yeah and the only hard part of that in that game was the in my opinion was the um the puzzle with the with the chess pieces Yes, that was that was just about it. Yeah, that that was it for me. Like I and everyone's just like, "Oh, well, you played the original, so you knew." And I was like, no, "Dude, like <laughs> playing the original Resident Evil Two doesn't mean you're gonna know where to go in the in Resident Evil Two remake." Exactly. <laughs> it's, it's a completely different game. It's got a lot of the same areas and a lot of things from the past, but it's a really different game. And oh, I don't know, man. Like it just that, that really bums me out. You can't like you can't call yourself a reviewer and not finish these games. If you can't finish it, you can't finish it. I mean, I, I know like some of them might work for like big gaming journalist sites or whatever the case may be and stuff, and they have to get something out. But it, it, if it's a game that you don't know how to play or it's something that you're not interested in, you shouldn't review it. That would be like me reviewing like Madden games. I don't play Madden, so I'm not going to review them. Remember the uh, the Cuphead tutorial guy? Oh God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I'd forgotten about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yeah, Dark Souls. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I, I fucking love it. Um, Yo, he got trolled so hard. I mean, like, come on now, the, the Cuphead compared to like Contra Hardcore or uh shattered soldier or really you know uh any game from the 90s 80s 90s is easy that game is not hard 
yeah it's like you just gotta like you know keep your eye on the ball type deal it's 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 got its challenges i will admit that yeah but you can do it you just gotta watch what the enemies do in the nes days it's a little it's a little tougher with you know enemies coming back on screen after you've backed off for a second and then they come back after you've killed them you know that's that's that you know that ninja gaiden bullshit and co- early contra Ugh. games but <laughs> we got ptsd from ninja gaiden and king contra <laughs> Yes, we did, but we still survived. <laughs> but yeah, there's there's moments where I look at that cart sitting on my on my uh, shelf, and I'm just like, "You motherfucker!" <laughs> <laughs> I know, I remember what you did. <laughs> you should be like, go to a therapist and like touch here on the doll where it made you hurt <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> it hurt me everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh my god. Um. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, like I, I guess to close off this little segment and everything, just um, rev- like reviewers are weird. Like uh, reviewers, like I, I get people have their own opinions, but sometimes you just feel that their opinions really aren't their own. Yeah, like you feel like they're just being it. controlled or like puppetized. You know, what and paid for. And, and there have been many companies um where I've like okay so. <sighs> Oh, fuck it, the games are out already. Uh, <laughs> Square Enix. So Square Enix, um, Ubisoft, even Capcom to an extent, uh, especially Nintendo. They'll give you, oh, and Bandai Namco as well. They'll give you, like, you literally have to sign contracts. Yep. Uh, for, for people who may not know that, you'll sign an NDA. Basically, if you if you breathe wrong... They will sue your ass. And like, it's, it's a mess, but you'll sign these contracts. You can't show this. You can't talk about this. You can't do this. You can't do that, which effectively I feel like it, it kills journalism because they're telling you what you can and can't talk about. Like it's, you're not like, unless the game is already out and they didn't give you a code for it you can't give the most honest opinion because you're still handcuffed with one arm behind your back. Exactly. Like you, you really can't like uh, now, now I admit like not showing gameplay stuff like puzzles being solved. Maybe you don't want to like post any spoilers about the story that I can Mm -hmm. respect. You know? Yeah. I get that. But you know, if there is like a, a game breaking bug or if there's a section of the game that's not good and you don't want people knowing about it and stuff then i don't know like it's just it's not an honest review now it is tough because like you know when you're like somebody on like my level and you know no one's going to give you a freaking code you just got to wait till the game comes out and then you know hopefully you know your review is still relevant at that point which sometimes it's not but you know at least you can say at the end of the day hey my words are my own but like we said earlier you're able to like for your you yourself you have been able to make your review is your own and they're still honest yeah even with my hand handcuffed behind my back you can't like okay so like what is the, the is reason that game? Gun that More... i just heard get loaded what's behind me <laughs> <laughs> so so uh what is it immortals phoenix rising right yep so that just that just came out mm-hmm. so uh i was part of I, I don't know how i got selected because ubisoft when i wanted to get uh assassin's creed and Watch Dogs, they're like yeah fuck you you're not getting it <laughs> and then they're like oh yeah we'll give you this game that we put no money behind marketing at all they i was really like okay didn't. i never saw much of that game at all being advertised dude there was like nothing and it's crazy because it's one of the best games like if you love breath of the wild it's breath of the wild meets assassin's creed it's so good plus the humor dude i you would die laughing at the humor it's, i heard it's re- i it's heard really it was good. pretty well written in, in that respect and i heard i heard it's even better than breath of the wild in many uh, uh aspects of the game yeah way better but the thing is nobody um at ubisoft they didn't put any marketing behind it literally if anybody wants to review that game or stream it they had a thing on Twitter. They were giving it to anybody. Oh, wow. Any any and everybody. Oh, you want to go here? You want to go here? If you know anyone, here's a, here's a link. Have them fill this out. We'll give them a code. They were desperate because they put no money behind it. Hmm. Like, there was nothing. I was like, damn, the game is dropping next week, and there's... You you put nothing? No? What, 
really? So um, with that, there were some um, some things like I wasn't supposed to show this area, wasn't supposed to show this cutscene, wasn't supposed to show the beginning. So I was streaming it, and then I got to an area, and because you know I had just started playing the game, I got to this one area, and I was like, oh, oh shit, I'm not supposed to show this. Oh well, oops. <laughs> I can't do shit about it now. <laughs> it's live. I can't go back and like fix time. <laughs> right? But yeah, it's 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 wild, man. I just I, I wish companies were uh it's actually kind of like what I said in my uh my killer instinct video was uh I, I wish companies would go to reviewers more and like YouTube mm -hmm. content creators and really listen to them because uh this is actually something I was trying to talk to people about this whole Nintendo fiasco with Melee and Splatoon. Um, oh dude that's, that's that's some bad shit but what I, what I was trying to tell people was I was like look one of the reasons why things like that we got the the internet on the Wii now obviously a lot of people don't think that that's a big deal because gaming like online for the Wii wasn't that big and obviously Super Smash Brothers Brawl didn't run as good but it was it mm -hmm. made you be able to access things like you know uh, the channel that everybody loved was which was downloading you know Nintendo games Super Nintendo games fucking Commodore 64 was on it of the Sega Master System games and shit mm -hmm. that was because of Iwata when he was still around and yeah. everybody's just like oh he's not the greatest president ever or something like that you know I was like yeah he is like this but the thing was he also had to convince other people he had to consider like I think it was like a like the board or whatever like 12 people he had to convince in order to get the Wii and if one person said one thing wrong like or like if they said no to it they could have scrapped the whole idea but they all agreed with it and took the chance and it was a big success for them um and that's the thing Iwata he wasn't disconnected from yeah. what gaming was even though he was like in his 50s at the time uh, you know of, of, of his passing at least I'm pretty sure he was in his 50s but yeah he was like 53 or so yeah he never way too, lost way too young yeah way too young and he was he never lost what he was because didn't, like didn't it on his desk and say you know uh like president uh developer and gamer wasn't that like one of the things on his business cards mm -hmm. yeah so things like that you, you really look at things like that and you're like holy shit like he really fucking cared and you know there's a lot of people that like what seems to be like nintendo and a lot of other companies it's just a bunch of guys that are all business guys. And that's not bad because you need business to run a business. But if you're not trusting your developers, the people that you hire to make games that are in tuned to what the younger people are, then you're going to hurt yourself. You're going to shoot yourself in the foot, which is, again, I, I think that's why a lot of smaller dev, uh, devs do a lot better. I mean, you look at the guys like Yacht Club Games who made Shovel Knight. I think they Amazing game. <laughs> it's like one of the best games that's come out i think ever it is yeah. such a love letter to the old games while making it its own game and the fact that the content they put out for like what like fucking it's been out since the like the 3ds pretty much mm -hmm. it's been out since like 2014 and they're still giving content for it it's, it's amazing and that's what I, I i wish gaming companies would would do honestly is you know get better at connecting with people you know uh, I yeah. think I think Capcom's done a good job with uh, getting back to you know the people again. Yeah, they lost their way for a long while. <laughs> yeah, like they 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 did, but they they eventually did. They they came back around. I think that was great. Um, I guess uh, yeah, we should move on uh, to another. Actually, this is another interesting question. So because you've interviewed so many fucking people uh, since you've been doing this now, like who has been your favorite to interview? You don't have to say you don't have to say me and the guys or anything like that. We won't take that personally. <laughs> Well, no, well, definitely you guys are in my my top ten. You All guys right. are definitely up there. You guys are definitely up there because that was a lot of fun. A lot of people are not that fun to interview, um, but a lot of people are. Um, I'd say one of the most fun people I've had the opportunity to interview was um, actually, I want to say, huh. John Eric Bentley, the guy who did um, Barrett, Final Fantasy VII Remake. Mm -hmm. That guy, man, love him. Love his energy. Love how down to earth he is. Like, he has no ego about it. And it was just fun because it was like, talking to him was like, man, we knew each other our whole life. <laughs> he, he's, very, he's very personable. Dude, at PAX East this year, he was there. He literally like went up to the, all the Final Fantasy cosplayers in line at the Square booth. And some people didn't know who he was. 
mm-hmm. and everything. And then others people did it when people like recognized it. Like he was like all smiles. And I was on a photo shoot when I heard this happen. And I was like, of course, of course. I just walked away from you guys saying hi to you, just standing in line with you. And of course he shows up when I leave to go do a photo shoot. Of course. <laughs> And uh, people saying he was like the nicest guy. Like, yeah, I did. I, I watched that, and like, you you did really good. He was a he was a blast. Yeah, dude, he was uh, he was a lot of fun. Him, um, Gerald Rivers, who does in Bison. Oh my super god, super brilliant. I love that guy. Super down to earth. Uh, very, very much into like music and uh, spirituality and meditation. But like, it's kind of funny. And I'll share an, an inside story because this is. This is funny, and I've never had the opportunity to tell this. This is an exclusive for you. World premiere, um, people. Here we go. World star premiere. <laughs> so um, when I reached out to him, was it two, three years ago, to uh, come on my show, um, I initially was, I got him, you know, he agreed to it. Then I reached out to, um, what is her name? Um, I know her real name, Jenny Lou. Remember her? I think she was the chick that worked. She wrote for Dexerto. Oh, and Red Bull. I heard she disappeared recently. Like she just dipped out of the scene. Huh. <laughs> you can edit this whole part out if you want. I don't care. Oh, no, no. Like, but anyway, I was, just, I was just like, oh, really? Holy crap. <laughs> so I reached out to her because I had previously had her on and, you know, she presented herself as a super knowledgeable fighting game FGC person. And then come to find out, well, you know, not really, <laughs> mm. you know, looks, looks can get you a lot of places. But anyway, um, she, you know, I knew she was a big Bison fan. So I was like, oh, OK, you know, you know, if you want to co-host this interview with me. So it was cool. She was down for it. And then I started seeing how she was presenting it. So she was promoting it, but promoting it in the sense of it was her interview. Then she started saying she got it. She got him, but she reached out to me to give me the opportunity. So I started seeing how the narrative kept changing. Hmm. And then um, about a few days before the interview, I was like, okay, so what are the, uh, I asked her like, what is it? Your, your questions. So she sent me the questions and dude, I shit you not. (sighs) She had 40 questions. Jeez. And we only, we only had a hour and a half time slot to, to do this interview with him. 40 questions. And about 35 of them were about bison sexuality. Okay. Yeah. No, does he, what does he like to do with the dolls? I mean, Cammy, how does he feel about Chun Lee? Um, I sent those to Gerald and I'm like, hey, um, I'm not quite comfortable having this person co-host this with me because i saw some of their questions and i don't want you to think that you know this is how i do a show i said if you're comfortable with these questions i said i'm gonna send it over to you if you're comfortable with it then um you know we can go through with it so he looked at it him and his 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 lady they looked at it they were not comfortable with it (laughs) They're like, no, of course, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> right. So I was like, all right. He's like, uh, can we just record and not let her know? I was like, yeah. So we did that. And then I made the announcement public. I had just interviewed him in the episode was up and she was. Salty. She I, was salty. I mean, I, I've, I've been there before. Like when I meet, have met voice actors and everything like that. And I've been standing in line and like, I can, like, I can hear what people are asking these voice actors and, you know, sometimes people are in another world. It's like, do you realize yeah. that the it's an actor and they're not the actual person? They may be the voice, but like they're not the character. Like, no, ew. That, that's like you know, case in point. That's that's like saying like our our friend Ruben is Dante. 
Yep. He is so far removed from that character. <laughs> Very true. But he's but he's very down to earth, but he, he does not walk around acting like Dante. No, he definitely does not. No, he definitely no. does not. <laughs> yeah, it's a, some of these questions people ask, I'm just like, okay. Yeah, no, it's true. Like, I mean, it's like, I, I, I love like when some actors can just like roll with it, but like you, then you see like some actors that are like very uncomfortable and you can clearly tell. Mm. Uh, it's, yeah. But um, yeah. So like, uh, so you had that. Like, so who are some of the other uh, ones that you really love? I mean, you said Ruben and everything. You've had him on before, obviously. Yeah, I've had Ruben on twice, and um, right. I really enjoy talking to Ruben. He's a very, uh, very, very open minded, very willing to talk and let you talk. And we were actually talking about this before we did the podcast. Like, he's willing to literally sit and talk with anyone. Oh like, yeah, he's just like he's like I said, like people like people say, yeah, he loves that space stuff. He's he's out there with that. I was like, yeah, but if you meet him, he's the most down to earth guy you'd ever meet. Mm-hmm. Anything I love him uh, for. He's a great dude, great fucking dude. Yeah, uh, him, uh, Nick Apostolides. <laughs> great, Nick, my fellow love buddy that from guy. Boston. <laughs> love that guy. Love that guy. Love his energy. Um, the only other person I could say I had a really really good time with was. Um, Let's see. Isaiah Washington. Really? I had a good time. He was intimidating, but I had a good time with him. <laughs> I'm shocked. He even was like, yeah, I come on your show. And like a lot of people are like, isn't that a guy from Grey's Anatomy? Yeah. He's cool. He's he's intimidating as hell. He has no filter. But it, it was a good, it was a good time having him on, like getting to talk to him and um seeing how he is and and you know he's th- that character he played on tv was very much him <laughs> he is in real life <laughs> but yeah it, he was a lot of fun um I, I guess i could say one of the ones i didn't have the most fun with uh kira buckland and not just because she she was this i think i caught her at a bad time but yeah she her energy was really low but it was cool getting to talk with her getting to chat with her but you know, bring the energy. It's never fun as a podcaster to deal with someone that comes on your show with no energy because it feels like you're pulling teeth. Yeah, like it, 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 it's it's tough. Like you know, I um, I, I did like I did restaurant work for about a like a long time before I did photography full time, and I was mm-hmm. doing it for years. And when you didn't want to be there, when you were just having a bad fucking day, and you didn't want to deal with ungrateful people, you had to like turn that energy on in order to make that money. You had to turn that energy on to get through the day and deal with coworkers who were all drama or, you know, uh, mm-hmm. guests that were just fucking horrible. And that's what you got to do. Like, and, and that's the thing, like, if you don't want to do a podcast or an interview with somebody, then just say no. Just tell them that, like, yeah. you know, like you, you, like, you don't have uh, the, the energy for it and stuff. And you know, some don't. Like, I've seen some interviews with some uh, actors and, and voice actors and stuff, and you can just clearly tell it's like, it's not something they want to do. Now, I mean, it's because they're promoting a movie or some new works. That's why they're doing it. But, mm-hmm. you know, if you're not going to have fun with it, you know, don't stress yourself out by coming on to a, a person's show and everything like that if you don't want to do it. No? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, like... Uh, I, I, I am a firm believer that like, you know, try to get the people that have always uh, are always really like, some of the best people I interviewed over on the row was uh, one of the, one of the best ones was Jeff shine. Everything. Yeah. Jeff, Jeff was amazing. amazing. Yeah. And then he's, a, he's such a funny guy. He's great. Like when, uh, when I brought up on, on row that he was uh, going to be captain America on the Avengers game and everything like that, like a big smile had come across his face. I think he was really glad somebody brought that up. Like he was very humble about that, but I could tell like his kind of like, he kind of got that look like when you're that little kid at Christmas that gets to like peek at the presents before Christmas morning. Mm-hmm. He kind of had that look on his face. And he's, he's, <laughs> he's super nice. And of course, obviously like, you know, Nick has always been great. We've had him on, uh, I think we, we had him on once, but I think we had him on for a gameplay. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, when we we interviewed yeah. him, but then uh, when he was when he came home to visit, we streamed the game from his house. We did that like the PlayStation Four thing where like you could set the thing up or whatever. Uh, mm-hmm. We captured we captured it, and him and his brother and cousin were playing it, and that was such a great time. Um, yeah, that was that was a, that was a fantastic interview. Even the one that I just did recently on my on my channel here with my friend uh, Morgan's cosmic uh, turtle cosplay she's fucking hilarious like she was great and, 
there's just been so many good ones out there and it's just it's a great job to do honestly and like i said i think you've literally got probably like i'm not saying that because you're my buddy and shit like that because if if you didn't i would tell you if it sucked because i want to see you <laughs> succeed so i will tell you what you're fucking up but you know i don't sugarcoat stuff you want sugar you go to a fucking candy store you come to the truth and you get the you just get that from me that's it you get the bland <laughs> truth i might be bland and boring but motherfucker i'm gonna make it so that you understand what you're doing wrong so you can succeed and be happy <laughs> and like i said dude like you've literally got like the best podcast because you just you just roll with it you know how to talk to people even like ones that you say like you don't do like you don't like you know you didn't enjoy talking to that much because there wasn't much personality you still make it work and I, the biggest thing is like a lot of people I, I think you may know this i may have told you this before but i i have two things that kind of go against me when it comes to podcasting which it helps me work through one english is not my first language and then two i have a speech impediment well, i didn't very know english wasn't your first uh your first language there no no shit it's, like uh, you have no accent or anything like you could you fooled <laughs> me i've worked a long time to get rid of it but yeah i my my mother language is uh samoan right so so samoan then hawaiian then uh crazily enough spanish and then english um so when i learned english i was in the south so i picked up a super thick southern draw and i've worked for the last 15 years to get rid of it <laughs> and on top of that you know with my my stutter i stutter and stammer so sometimes i'll go T -t -t -t. yeah i get that <laughs> so like i try to to hide it and like you know, one of the things is just doing podcasting. It forces me to talk to people from all over and I just, you know, I get through it and uh, it's a challenge sometimes, especially with the people that have no energy. I'm like, right. So, uh, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, that's the thing, like you're doing something to overcome all that and, you know, to, to better it. And that's, that's actually like how Bruce Willis got rid of his stutter was because of acting. Yeah, and yeah. Acting is like how he got rid of it and everything. You'd never know he had one. So again, like I've known you for like two years now. I had no fucking idea that English wasn't your first language. <laughs> like a lot of people, like for me with my accent, like they hear it and they're like, oh, wait, you're from Boston. It's like, fuck, I thought I hit it. Like I've, I have hit it well sometimes, but sometimes like when I get excited or if I get angry, it like comes out and everyone's just like, oh, geez, he's going full Mark Wahlberg. I'm like, shut the <laughs> fuck up. Dude, I've, I heard it come out a couple of times so far with this recording. I'm like, yep. I hear it. <laughs> Bunch of fucking bastards. Get the fuck out of here. Go get your fucking coffee somewhere else. And I, I have and I, I'm only saying the F bomb repeatedly for historical accuracy. Dude, you know who who like okay, so you've been around Nick. When he gets excited, it comes out. And I when I was hanging out with him in uh LA last year, I was like, how do you deal with like because Boston to LA, that's such a huge like, I guess you could even say that's a cultural difference too. Like, it really is. When it came, when I heard it come out of his voice, I was like, I was like, oh, I can tell. Now he's like, oh yeah, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta push it back down. <laughs> <laughs> that's the great thing about being the, uh, the as good as an actor as he is and everything like that. He can hide it very well. Yeah. <laughs> Man. <laughs> you know it, it 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 comes out like people always say like the jersey accent comes out because that stupid jersey shore uh, fucking show and stuff but oh, nothing gosh. comes out stronger and harder than a, a fucking boston accent unless it's a fucking guy from south boston sucker punching you in the face like that's the only thing that's going to hit you harder than a, a boston accent is a sucker punch um <laughs> like oh my god like there's like because people always ask me like people always ask me this question like they're like dude like is everything like all my friends that live in other countries or like in other states and they're like dude is, is the movies about boston really real and i was like well mm. you know the departed was you know based on whitey bulger and other events and everything but it's not a hundred percent even close to accurate and stuff and you know black mass was about you know whitey bulger but it was also heavily you know misconceptuated in it or whatever you call it there and then and I was like, oh, but yeah, you know, the Boondock Saints, that fucking happened. That's 100% fucking accurate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and people are like, wait, there's two guys that went around fucking killing people in Boston? I was like, well, they might not have been the Boondock Saints, but everybody does that in Boston. <laughs> 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 and, 
it was just like, oh my god. They're like, wait a minute, what about that commercial with Casey Affleck and Dunkin' Donuts and everything? I was like, oh, that's true. That's that's true. People are like that. They get fucking crazy. Um, and he, oh, I think one of the best like examples of Boston in in history too is um, fucking uh, the thing that just came out with Bill Burr where he's talking about Samuel uh, Samuel Adams beer. Mm-hmm. It's like yeah, it's all right. And because like they they try to make it like it's the taste of Boston, but even as I've been here my whole life, I'm like nobody fucking drinks that shit. Everybody's drinking that fucking piss Budweiser <laughs> and fucking uh, like all your uh, oh God, what's some of the other beers they have? Like, uh, Rolling Rock is a big one out here. I don't know why it smells really bad. I, I again, I don't drink, so I just, uh, but like, I never see people go nuts for Samuel Adams. Really, I never see it. I <laughs> everybody just starts beating each other up, and I'm like, eh, that's that's about right. I've been in a lot of South Boston bars because of the girl that I dated at one point, and it's true. They just start fighting for no fucking reason, and then after <laughs> the fighting's done, and whoever doesn't get arrested, everybody buys each other a fucking drink. I am not joking. It's the strangest shit that I was ever exposed to. Like, Selfie is like, you think Boston is like a whole fucking different culture? Like, Selfie is a subculture of that. I need to see this. Uh, dude, like, <laughs> I, 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 like it's, it's the fucking truth. I mean, I don't go with Selfie because that's, I, I don't want to, I, I don't hate myself that much. Although, for, for those of you who are watching right now and listening, uh, if you do want to experience what a little bit of what South Boston is like, go play Fallout 4. And when mm-hmm. you get to the fort, everything that has like the giant Myrler queen in it or whatever, and you got to mm-hmm. build up defenses, that's actually a real place. That's called Castle Island. It's it's also called Fort Independence because there is there is a real fort there in South Boston, mm-hmm. and it's right there on the ocean. You can watch the, the the planes take off from Logan Airport. The ships go by, and there's a famous place out there called Sullivan's, and they have like the best hot dogs and best burgers around. Fries are okay and everything, but it's really more so the burgers and hot dogs people fucking line up for hours to get because it's like a, it's a tradition. Um, mm-hmm. But you actually get to go. They actually put Sullivan's in the game. They just couldn't put the name in there, but like uh, they had like S L uh, S U L V, and like that was it. Because it's that mm-hmm. little thing that you stay, like, when you go when you play the mission, you go to it. That's where they're all those guys are camping out at first. They're like, yeah, we're going to stay right here for a little bit, then we're going to charge the base. That's Sullivan's. And it's kind of accurate to how it looks in real life. So, wow. Yeah, like, it was, it, was, it was crazy. But, yeah, Boston, whole different place from, like, you know, like you said, California. Because I've been to California. I've been to L.A. And it is a different lifestyle. I'm like, man, everybody's so kind and relaxed out here I mean, it's because like they're all high and stuff like that back in boston like, you bump into somebody and you're ready to fight them <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, like, even in texas I, I i went down to texas one time everything like that i bumped into a guy down in walmart and i was just like oh i'm sorry about that sir i'm, I'm so sorry he goes oh no, son that's all right now you just watch yourself next time okay have a good day take care now and i'm just looking <laughs> around and my friend is like what are you looking at and i was like back in boston that would have been a fucking slug fest <laughs> Like some woman literally would like if I hit if I hit if I did that to a woman she would have like the, with the two kids in her arms she still would have tried to kick the crap out of me she would have thrown one of the kids at me. <laughs> so okay, so note to self: I should not bring my wife to to Boston because she's she's one of the people that she'll walk into folks just because she's not paying attention. And like, dude, that happened. When we were in uh, L.A. Really? and. Uh, yeah, like we were on, I think we went to Muscle Beach yeah. and I was like, pay attention to your surroundings. My wife doesn't do that. I'm like, <laughs> pay attention to your surroundings. And if anyone hands you anything, don't take it. <laughs> so she's a she's a local Hawaii girl, you know, not really that well versed on social dynamics outside of Hawaii. Right. So she, um, well, kind of, she lived in Rhode Island for a bit, but not California, not in that sense. Oh, she, so was, she, in, she was in my backyard. <laughs> yeah. So like we went, we went to Muscle Beach and we had, we almost got robbed, almost got in a fight just because like these guys are trying to sell their rap CD and they, they stuck it out to her. And she just took it. And they're like, yeah, sign this. And you, you got to buy it. And I was like, no, thank you. Here you go. And then he started following us. I'm like, walk faster. I'm like, please pay fucking attention to your surroundings. We are not in Hawaii. <laughs> you know, and not only that, I think we had a situation where uh, we went to E3. So we were in downtown LA. And um, I think we just 
more so her than me. She stood out like she didn't know where anything was. And we had people pull up like this one dude in his busted ass hoopty <laughs> with a window that's broken. And he, he's wearing a wife beater or, or a tank top. I think got to classify that tank top. So he's wearing a tank top, pulls up, say, hey, hey, miss, you called the oop, right? Get in the car. And she's like, no, I, I was like, stop making contact with him. Just turn around, walk away. Don't walk towards the car. He's like, I can't hear you. Come here. I was like, don't walk towards the car. <laughs> Get your ass over here. <laughs> can't take you nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. I love it. Oh, my God. It's fucking great. <laughs> Like, no, I mean, I, I've been to Venice Beach, too, before. My my dad was out there, like, way, like, long, long ago and stuff like that. And, like, when I told him what I went through out there, he goes, eh, it seems a lot different than that. And then when I was there, I was like, yeah, Dad, a lot of things have changed since, like, 1960. Like, don't worry. Like, <laughs> yeah, for those, a lot of my viewers and people who see this in the future, if you don't know, like, my dad, he's, he's a lot older than uh, most people of my age that have a dad. Like, most people that are my age at, like, 33 should have dads in their, like, late 60s early 70s maybe even younger but my dad's 81 he had me late in his life i'm from like i said i'm from marriage number three or as i or as i like to call it prison sentence um damn yeah yeah uh yeah it's bad <laughs> it was bad uh but yeah no like uh so yeah you've like you travel i mean you you even gone to uh you went to e3 a uh, lot haven't you well no last year was the first time i ever went really? that was the first time i've i've always wanted to go but i always thought it was outside of the realm of possibility but um pdp gaming they actually they flew me out and uh gave me a press pass and and uh, the only thing they didn't do was give me a hotel they say oh yeah just get a hotel by the airport yeah that was a mistake yeah <laughs> big money way dude a hundred dollars to and from hundred dollars there it was so bad oh my god i remember when we okay so my wife and i got there we got our we got a hotel couldn't check in couldn't check in till three had to go to uh e3 the convention center to get our badges Mm -hmm. so that took an hour almost two hours getting there that was over a hundred dollars and we got there got our badges we still had our luggage so then we had to go all the way back to the hotel to check out I mean, check in. So that was another hundred some dollars. And then took the, <laughs> took an Uber back. So we spent like $300 in the first day. Well, no, 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 no. Within the first six hours, just on Uber. So then we uh, got there, got, we ran into Ruben and um, I think it was like six or uh, five or six. And they were getting ready to close. So we were going to go in and try to walk around. And then when we try to go in, my wife's always like, oh, I don't have my badge. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Where is it? She's like, I don't know. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Are you, like, seriously? And so then we go down. They can't reprint the badge. They can't. You can't buy another badge because they, they sold out. I was like, okay. She's like, I'm going to go back to the hotel. I'm like, that's another hundred. Ugh. spent the money she went back found it it was uh i forgot where she said it was so she got it spent another hundred to come back and by the time she got back they were you know they were close so i was like god damn i haven't spent money this fast and ever <laughs> <laughs> that shit was expensive <laughs> but yes, uh, uh, other than that, you know, days two, three, and four were really nice at E3 when, you know, minus my bank account, which took me about a year to clear that up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Well, I mean, it's, you know, not like you have to worry about, uh, you know, ever wondering about what's what it's like going to go back to E3 because that's probably never happening again. True, true. If if this If this pandemic didn't kill E3, then, you know, I mean, it had to have at this point. Yeah. That was already like kind of getting to a point where it's just like, why? Like, why well, had someone try to tell me like what it's like there because they'd been a couple a couple of times. So I was like, look, I get why you feel like it's great for you because you're a guest and you cosplay and they they gave you passes to like jump lines and like come 
to the floor before everything opened so you got to play all these things other people have to wait like five hours to play like 10 minutes of a fighting game or whatever the case may be if even that if that yeah like i mean i you know like i i don't when i, I go to pack i've been to pack south which is what me and the row guys and and uh nick joined us for and everything uh this at the beginning of this year the first con of the year which is fucking great which was great because like me me and ali have been going to cons for years especially me i'm like the veteran con because i've been going since like 2004 2005 and jj Corey, bob uh jj's wife none of them had ever been to cons before it was like a whole new mm-hmm. experience and like they were blown away and they're like this is great we can't wait to wait you know it's like we had like you know they got like a packed area for like all of our uh all the people that wanted to come see us at the con- at the, mm-hmm. at the panel we had we had like over 200 people i think and then we had even more show up for the signings and mm-hmm. it was great and jj's like yeah like it's gonna be great it's gonna be awesome we're gonna do this like all the time and i was like oh i mean it's gonna be expensive dude but if that's what we want to do i'm all down for that and then like you know a couple couple months later pax uh east happens and the pandemic starting but no one's really taking it that seriously kind of like how they're not taking it seriously that right now anyway uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> but we get well after like I, I got done at that convention i was like yeah something tells me we're not getting any more cons for the rest of the year guys and they're like you think and i was like i, I think we're done for the year guy <laughs> i think 2020 is gonna be bad and then yeah it, it was like 2020 like nixed a lot of things for everybody and like i mean they've said like some minor like meet and greets i know like jc david frank and jason font have been doing like those uh comic book store things and stuff they've been very like careful about that but um Mm -hmm. cons are great uh but yeah like i i hope they come back because i miss going to them and i mean i would like to go to something like e3 i would love to get invited to that um but it's never gonna happen like that uh, e3 is not gonna be a thing anymore i mean pack self i mean like i think con, like i think cons are finally starting to warm up to this is something that i know doug walker was fighting for for a long time with the nostalgia critic and all the stuff that he and his team do like they were fighting to get youtubers noticed and brought into conventions and i'm like you know what i didn't realize it there's not a lot of youtubers that go to uh, big conventions they don't get asked to come yeah they don't and it's a shame because some of them are pretty cool and some of them obviously some of them aren't because you you know you get the good you get the bad and stuff but um yeah like i mean i i was kind of hoping that like you know maybe like providing that you know pack self uh really like, i think they liked us and stuff so i'm hoping like we can work on you know maybe getting invited by them uh providing january doesn't i mean there's no way like we're getting invited this year to it because it's it's i mean they're they're supposedly doing pax east in my city and i'm just like yeah, you're moving it from march to june i still don't think that's the best idea yeah um i mean i'm hoping it does because again i love cons i love going to them and it's where you meet a lot of good people and um like i said if they start really taking like you know like i think more gaming conventions also need to like happen like game centered ones the mm-hmm. south the south has a lot like texas has a lot of good ones like retro palooza and uh, a bunch of other ones like there's like Magfest too, which is like all gaming and all music, which is great. But mm-hmm. uh, you know, con- there needs to be ones more so for video games focused and have what PAX does. Yeah, too many games needs to get bigger. Yes, it does. Like that's got its following, but it's sh- and I just feel it should be bigger than it already is. Yeah, uh, but I think I think PAX is uh, actually hurt uh, getting hurt. Uh, in the long run, kind of, because when we were at PAX South, as much as we loved being there, they didn't mm-hmm. use the entire show floor at all. Like half the floor, like barely half the floor was used. Still a lot of stuff there. Don't get me wrong. Like me and Nick were walking around and uh, finding all this cool stuff to like, try, uh, you know, play and try out and all these mm-hmm. like cool merchandise and stuff like that. Like he found, I remember Nick found himself a Super Nintendo with Mega Man X and he was jamming on that. <laughs> yeah, video of him just like having a blast with it and stuff but you know we realized it was like man there's really not a lot being utilized and, and ali who had actually been to pack south uh numerous times was saying that mm-hmm. they did heavily downgrade and even pax east in boston feels like it too they charge you like freaking outrageous like almost new york comic-con prices but there's mm-hmm. not it doesn't uh justify the money spending to go to this yeah very um, very true i don't know i just uh but i mean like there's a lot of games there and i mean you know, like, there's, there's a lot of, like, indie games at mine, but being in games, for the most part, I mean, like, we're still, we still got some time left for this. Um, you, Obviously, you've been gaming forever, like myself. Like, you're a Capcom guy. Like, what was some of, like, the best shit you had growing up for, like, games? Ooh. 
so um i'm a huge Mega man fan yeah. i absolutely i absolutely love the blue bomber so which is crazy because growing up i want to say from like 93 to like uh 2000 i only owned let's see one two three four Mega Man games but it was crazy because i'd always go to either hollywood video or blockbuster the kids don't know that's how we got our games if yep. we couldn't you know because half the times our parents would only look look kids let me tell you something back in our day our parents the only time we got a video game was either our birthday or christmas that was it. That's right. So y'all kids going around like, oh, this game's on sale. I'm going to get it. Yeah. Wish we could do that back then. There was so many games we didn't get to play. Or you had to do the thing where you traded with friends and hope that they would actually not steal your game and actually give it back to you. Exactly. But um, <laughs> uh, for me, uh, I used to play a lot of uh, Mega Man X. It was the first Mega Man game I got to own. Then I went back. And every time we go to Hollywood Video or Blockbuster, I'd rent uh, X2 and X3 religiously. Yes. I rented those games so many times that I could, basically, I could have pretty much owned them, but my parents would never buy it for me. They'd rent it. And it's crazy because when I see so many reviews now for X2 and X3, the modern folks, when I say modern, I'm like people born in like 98 or 2000, they hate it. They're like, oh, these games are just not that great. I'm like, man, don't, they were the shit back then. Absolutely loved them. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I had uh, X, so X to X3. Um, my Super Nintendo constantly got rotation. So <laughs> Final Fight 2, Final Fight 3, Final Fight Guy. Um, uh, what was it? Uh, Crash and the Boys, um, Brawl Brothers. What else did I have? Um, Chrono Trigger. I didn't like Earthbound. I still don't care for Earthbound now. Get but, off my um, show. That is blasphemy <laughs> here on this show. You, there's the door, sir. I bid you good day, sir. Hey, hey, hey. hey I hey. said good day, sir. I ain't leaving. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, I had that. Uh, what, what else was it? Uh, Dracula X, Castlevania Dracula X, which I loved it. I know a lot of people hate it. But I thought it was actually pretty good until you got to Dracula. Um, let's see, Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter, every freaking variation of Street Fighter. <laughs> to like people I don't don't understand. They complain about it now. I'm like, at least you didn't have to deal with the way they did it back then. Oh my god, right? Like now they just like give you DLC and patches and stuff. Before you had to buy a whole damn new game. Right. Wait, isn't Dan coming out next week? Oh my god, yeah, it's December. He's coming out. It's like, oh shit, I, forgot, I almost forgot about that. Oh man, I gotta I gotta play that. I hope I get my PlayStation back because my PS4 like went down a while ago and mm. uh, that stupid HDMI port in the back of it. The the hard the hard drive is fine. So I just gotta find mm. someone to take it out and like Frank and uh, you know and transport it into another one. So yeah, yeah. So that yeah, so those um what else did I play? And then I, uh, the 64, which I kind of wish I got to play station on the Saturn because honestly, I didn't have a lot to play on the 64. If it wasn't, I, I look at the 64, kind of like I look at the switch now and almost every Nintendo console from the N64 <laughs> onwards, if it wasn't made by Nintendo, it probably wasn't that great. Yeah, I mean, you're not wrong. We were, I mean, yeah, because like it, the N64 era, that was really, the, yeah, it was really rough. Like a lot of people, like they, people know that I fucking love like Mario Party and I love mm -hmm. Smash Brothers on the original one. And I love like all like, you know, Duke Nukem on there. And uh, even like, you know, the Army Men, Star Just Heroes that were on there too. Playing Resident mm -hmm. Evil 2 on there was fucking great. But they, they haven't, I, I went back to play uh, the first Bomberman that was on there. Mm -hmm. and as great as the music is and as cool as the design looks it just the controls have aged really bad because that was like the yeah. first time people had like you know developers had really gotten to that way like you go back and you play certain super nintendo games they've aged like a fine wine like super mario world chrono trigger any of the final fantasies pocky and rocky like they look great but 
games on the N64, even during PS1 and Sega Saturn didn't go that good, but um, N64, yeah. So, like, you, you didn't really have that great of a time that most people do with the N64. Well, I had... So, this is a crazy thing. I didn't have... Like, my parents bought me the 64, didn't buy me any games. <laughs> they bought, like, at launch, we got the 64 at launch. They rented Star Wars and what else was it uh star wars and they rented uh super mario 64 yeah. which was another game i rented so many times i could have owned it same uh, <laughs> before i got my 64 same so i i love those two games um and from there didn't get anything else until golden eye my parents bought that and um I remember all the controversy surrounding being a kid playing that back in the day. <laughs> um, but then from there, the next game I got was Ocarina of Time. And I was that man, that game, even to this day, I know a lot of modern gamers shit on it, but that game, they don't understand. And, and I think this is what frustrates me with this new generation. Again, people born in 98 and 2000 um, that, belittle a lot of the stuff that you and i grew up with like there was nothing like ocarina at time no there, there was nothing like super mario 64 there was nothing like golden eye and they they don't get that they're looking through it looking at it through modern lenses and i'm like okay yeah like they they, they don't that's where it all began for a lot of us this like the n64 may not have aged well but it gave us such great classics. Uh, and even even people that don't play the original like Resident Evil games, that, but they like Resident Evil, but they won't touch the old ones because they, mm -hmm. they shit on it. They're like, this is bad graphics. This is terrible and stuff. And I was just like, but that's what we had back then. This was revol like Resident Evil was revolutionary back in the day. Yep. Metal Gear was revolutionary back in the day. Like mm -hmm. a lot of games now, I, 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 and I think you might agree with me on this. When we got to the era of the PlayStation, like the, the original PlayStation, that's where we saw the landscape begin to change heavily. Yes. Yeah, like that was a big time for change. And that's when some of the most legendary games of all time came out. They either and or the system either produced uh great continuations of games that have already mm -hmm. been established, like Mega Man X4 being on there, which is still one of the greatest PS1 games of all time. Amen. Definitely, <laughs> definitely my favorite Mega Man X game, that's for sure. But, um, I you know, you had that, and that then game. it, be, and, you know, in Metal Gear continued on there. Uh, Silent mm -hmm. Hill began on there. Resident Evil began on there. And now, 20 something years later, these franchises, well, except for Silent Hill, unless it's a pachinko machine, are all still out there. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And, and that's the thing. Like, all these kids that, like, were, you know, born into gaming or just got into it within, like, you know, maybe even, like, like, even, like, when the, some of the kids I worked with at the, at the, um, restaurants some of them were only like they were born in like 2000 mm -hmm. and everything and so they played certain things growing up with their older siblings but they didn't get into gaming until like i think this generation's nintendo is definitely the the xbox 360 yes yes i fully agree with that yeah a lot of people don't th thankfully finally somebody does not a lot of people really do but if you really look at it the 360 offered Everything that like the Nintendo and Super Nintendo did in terms of playing games with friends just now online, nobody could come to your house anymore, which to be fair, I would rather have my friends come to my house and stream with them than stream over a fucking, you know, internet. Yeah. Like my best friend, he, we just played Halo. Like I, I literally, uh, I got Halo on the PC and then he uses my mm -hmm. Xbox one. He made his own account and we had a fucking blast playing it for like four or five hours together. Um, way better than playing online with a headset. It, you know, I mean, for some things I understand because, like, you know, if you and I want to play games, gr granted, you're not just gonna, you know, like step out your door and take a flight to fucking Boston all the way from Hawaii. That's <laughs> you know, that's that's a lot. But you know, th that's what it really is. The 360 is this generation's Nintendo because a lot of people really began to game on there, and it wasn't even just like people in general. It was also I, I noticed this too. It was a lot of girls. That began yeah. there too. I, I know there's a lot of people out there, a lot of girls out there, that say that they they're gaming since they were young and little kids. And some of them, I, I believe, and everything like that. Others, I've caught in lies about it. But, um, mm -hmm. yep, they've, they've. I have a lot of opinions on that, but you know, yeah. it's just like you know, don't lie about it. you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna get caught, and they did. 
because I remember like one person I, I knew they said that they were big into games as a kid like their first system was a nintendo because they're older siblings and that's what they loved and played and then like later on they were talking about how their first system was a playstation one and mm-hmm. i'm just like well what was it so you know there's a little bit you know people lie about that but <laughs> but i know i knew a lot of girls like when i worked the restaurants a lot of them started getting into games that they they knew i was a gamer and they're like yeah so my boyfriend plays a lot of like a lot of video games it's like oh what's he playing he goes well he only really plays call of duty and i'm like okay so you play call of duty right and she's like yeah but i want to get into like other games like you all right you want ones like call of duty or you want something different more fun and they're like well i mean you know like i i I played a little bit of like fighting games with like my sisters and brothers back in the day like you know we play street fighter and tekken is there anything that like that on 360 i was like yeah they got those games on there if you want you can play something like dead or alive and they're like what's that and i was like well it's a bit ridiculous of a game with how some of the girls look according to people out there but it's a it's still a good game for people to just jump mm-hmm. in and have fun with and play and i would recommend dead or alive 4 on the 360 and people were like this game is really fucking great you know and that's the thing like it was really like a a, a, a big change mm-hmm. so i mean i don't know like i just uh you know, for me, like I mean, like I said, we're we're old school gamers and stuff. For us, like it, like I feel it just peaked at the PS One. You also look at it this way too, like um, the three sixty was the three sixty PlayStation Three was when it started going mainstream. That's right, it did. That's when you had all these girls there hopping into gaming and look and, and and for the audience, we don't we don't care if you we we're not the type of gamer like gamers don't care what you are. If you play games, you're a gamer that that's just how we view it we don't know you as a girl playing we don't fucking care do you like games yeah cool whatever you know but um yeah that's when a lot of the girls hopped on that's when the mainstream started hopping on a lot of celebrities started hopping on because before that the idea of gaming was just it was something for kids which is funny you think about nerd culture right now how mainstream it is dude i remember getting my ass kicked for liking comic books and playing video games and watch yeah. the anime. I used to have people try to fight me in school all the time because, like, I liked video games and stuff. I remember me and my buddies uh, during recess were playing Pokemon, and kids would try to steal our Game Boys and everything like that, and I'd kick the crap out of them. Yeah. But it's it's, it's pop culture now. <laughs> yeah. And it, it is. It's pop culture. People see what it is. And, you know, I, I, I think that a big shift, I mean, a big thing to come to that, I, I feel that helped a lot was, like, you know, Marvel in many ways. Mm-hmm. I think Marvel had a big 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 uh what do you call it there a big um impact on that yeah it definitely did and um what else is that something else i want to add to what you're saying um oh okay so a lot of these journalists quotations um (laughs) a lot of them just got started into gaming with 360 era yep a lot of them because anything beyond that they have no knowledge of it or they hate it i was actually talking to one um i'm cool with him but uh i've called him out on this before because he made a post recently where he said to him if a game is more than a month or two old it's an old game i would have called him out too yeah what like no like i mean especially if like there are some games okay let's look at something like dragon ball xenoverse 2 the game's been out for like four or five years and it's still getting content sometimes Mm -hmm. even free content Mm -hmm. and if that's the game if that's his opinion of, of a game as being old then every fighting game that has pretty much come out in the last like eight years is old after two months and doesn't get a DLC character. Smash Brothers like Ultimate just hit two years the other day, I, so apparently I that game's it. old. It's hard to believe. Yeah, I know, right? It, it's crazy to believe that's been out for like, two, and I have not stopped playing it for two years. <laughs> uh, it only got worse when Terry got announced. I was just like, "Fuck!" Uh, now I'm gonna be playing this even more. Dude, I main Terry. I was so mad when people were like. Who is this grown up uh, Pokemon tamer? You, you okay? Remember the trailer came out? Oh yeah! And people thought Nintendo made him up. 
I remember like, that. Who? I saw the people on Twitter saying shit. They're like, I don't know who this is. Wait, where's he from? Like, wait, this is a lie. Is this like a fake trailer? Kind of like how when, uh, you know, like when they announced uh, K. Rule or whatever, it was just like, you know, it was just a duck hunt dog. But then K. Rule came down. I was like, no, motherfuckers. This is Terry motherfucking Bogard. Like, this is the <laughs> king of fighters, man. Okay. I just, I don't know how they did, they did know. Well, I mean, there is, I, I do have a slight thing about that. King of Fighters has only really flourished in, like, you know, South American countries. In, yeah, yeah. In America and, Korea. and Japan, King of Fighters was never really as big and popular as even, like, Mortal Kombat or, uh, like, you know, like, yeah, Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter and Tekken and even Virtual Fighter, it seems. Um mm. So like a lot of like they and they did all, jack all the fucking advertise them. I mean they were they were everywhere. Like Art of Fighting, Fatal Fury, King of Fighters was like on so many different consoles and stuff. But you know they just didn't have the impact they do now. And then Terry comes out and people are like, oh, "This is pretty cool." And then they're like, "I don't know how to do his controls. I don't like this." <laughs> I was like, Dude, "Welcome I, to King of Fighters, pal." <laughs> bro, when I play, I I there's so many people I know. They're like. They talk mad shit when they play Smash. And then I'm like, okay. They're like, who are you picking? Terry? They're like, man, I'm going to mop the floor with you. I run rough shot through them. Because <laughs> you can play him like you do in Fatal Fury or King of Fighters. He's got all the same inputs. Yep, he's got the options. And it's like, I just... I know a lot of people are mad. They're like, oh, why did to bring him in? I'm like... Because he's a he's he's an icon for fighting games. He is. He might not be and as big as like Ryu and Ken and everything like that, but he's there. And people don't even know that the same guy that made Ryu and Ken made him, made yep. Ryo Sakazaki. Mm -hmm. Like it's they, they quick to say, oh, it's a knockoff or it's a rip. No, same guy. <laughs> that's that's what people didn't understand. Like this is there's a whole legacy of art of fighting and fatal fury and king of fighters people need to understand that and they don't and again it's going back to what you're saying about like you know some of these gaming journalists that have never played things it's like okay yeah look i get if you haven't played you know these older games you might be a little bit younger and stuff but you know what take some history lessons about games go back to the past like fucking watch the angry video game nerd watch anybody like uh, watch the gaming historian right or anything go to these guys that are out there and do it because I, I mean I've had I've tried to talk to people that are reviewers on IGN and stuff and I gotta tell you man they they can't take criticism like I I got banned from IGN's Twitter really oh god yeah like I and that was that was before um what was it uh, I gave them I was talking about their Shovel Knight review mm -hmm. uh, they gave Shovel Knight a nine out of ten which is a well deserved score I'm not I'm not it's not about really the score so much but when they used to have their, I mean, I haven't watched an IGN review in forever because it just hurts to watch them. But when, so when I saw like that ending where they would pull up the pros and cons of the game, there was all con uh, all pros, no cons. I'm like, so why is this not a ten? And I, 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 I remember on their Twitter, I was talking to them about. It. I was like, I, I believe that this needs to be a ten. You guys do not know or seem to understand that when you don't have any cons to a game, it's a 10. This game controls beautifully. It looks beautifully. It takes from games of yesteryear while still making itself its own game. Where is mm -hmm. the fault in this game? And it had, and then, you know, obviously later it got a two player option, all the add ons and stuff. So I got banned for that. But before I also talk, or it was either, no, it was that or after, I think I can't remember exactly which one it was, or if it was, that, uh, maybe it wasn't that one directly. Uh, cause I, I've had, a, I've had a lot of, uh, talks with these guys over at IGN and they never go well cause they can't handle Kristen. But the biggest one that got me a lot of flack, people were fucking, uh, f like spamming my, uh, my Twitter was, mm -hmm. uh, when the super Nintendo mini came out. Do you remember, uh, do you remember how that came with star Fox two? Yeah. Yeah. The guy reviewing it was reviewing the game. Like it was a brand new game. Dude, mother, like the first oh, Star yeah. Fox was garbage. Everything. Like, you can't renew, like, review this thing like it's a new thing. And then everybody, like, starts attacking me, saying he's got, you know, he went to college for this and that. He's got degrees. And I'm like, so you're using the plankton thing. I went to college. <laughs> like, come on. I'm just trying to say, it's like, if you're going to review games, just make sure that, like, you 
you say it like you tell people it's like hey this is a game that came from a long time ago anything i mean it's really hard to say anything nice about star fox 2 to be fair but um, yeah you know i i mean i've seen people trash like other games like the legend of zelda uh, a link to the past which one has aged beautifully controls mm-hmm. beautifully you know and i'm just like how can you say that this is bad i've, I've seen people talk shit about super metroid and i'm just like you can go you can just get the fuck off the planet at this point if you're gonna trash metroid in front of me or anything you can go <laughs> like these reviewers man i know we keep coming back to this but like i just i just wish there was a, a better way for guys like you and me to like be known and not have some and you know at the same time like not have somebody whisper in our ear telling us what we can and can't say i mean we kind of do that anyway but you know again you find the way to do it and you find the way to like talk about all these things it's again one of the reasons why i like angry joe is because he goes in depth i mean you know sometimes 40 minutes for a review is is kind of long but he does point out the flaws to uh to games you can't you can't uh discredit him for that yeah which even he said, even he says like sometimes he's like, yeah, no, like, I mean, they're not going to send me anything. There's no freaking way they're going to send me anything. And then he was talking about the something about Microsoft and what he was saying about them. And then he got an Xbox and I was like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, man, I wonder if I ever made uh, Microsoft shit list for that uh, thing about the Xbox I talked about years ago. I can't remember the video, but like I was freaking out about uh, something about, I think it was like the 360 or whatever. And uh, a lot of people liked it because I was like so over the top. This is like seven eight years ago on youtube for me so like i've, I've changed <laughs> since then but uh it was funny um but yeah like so was yeah so you were saying that you played the n64 but you wish you had the chance for the sega saturn now did you ever get yourself a saturn um not until four five years ago that's about the same with me. I've had mine for about six or seven now. Because I wasn't able to get one at all when I was a kid because stores barely cared. They carried the games. They didn't carry the 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 console, which was... And then when you look into it, like this history of Sega with their consoles, mm. they pissed off retailers. Yes, they did. They really did. I mean, no, tell them about that. People don't need to listen to me babble about this stuff or anything because like, you're here. Like You're the guest. <laughs> <laughs> I know why the Saturn also failed in many other ways too, but no, go ahead for this. But like, um, yeah. So when I, I remember when we, cause we got the 64 from Toys R Us. Um, and I remember that day, my parents are like, do you want the PlayStation? You want this, the Sega Saturn, or do you want the 64? And I was a Nintendo kid growing up. You know, we didn't have the Sega Genesis. And only times I actually got to play it was when I went to a friend's house, which was really rare. I lived in the ghetto. So, you know, you go down the block, you could die. Anyway, <laughs> so, um, you know, I, um, you know, I, my experience with, this, with the, the Sega consoles was so limited. So I was like, uh, well, I guess I'll go with the 64. And I didn't really know much about the... Um, this the the playstation it just didn't seem like because i remember that was back when people were all crazy about the the 3d and you know everything had to be 3d and i just wasn't really sold on it because i liked the more cartoony stuff so i was like oh, i'll go with the 64 i I know i know nintendo so i'll stick with it and i kind of regret that because Mm -hmm. i wish that you know for people who don't know, when you had the 64, there was a lot of, uh, how should I put it? There's a lot of droughts. 97 was like their biggest year because they had a fuck ton of games like that came out. Like all like their best games came out in 97, but yeah, before and after that, it was kind of, it was kind of rough. Mm-hmm. It was very rough. It was very, very, very rough. And I was like, all right, well, um, you know, I've got these same games to play, and thankfully, I think it was um uh, late '97, early '98. That's when we got the PlayStation, and then uh, from there is all downhill. I'm like, man, I love this thing. Got <laughs> the first games I got for it was Final Fantasy VII and Ooh. uh, what else is it? Mega Man X Four. 
Those are my first two games. I played the crap out of Mega Man X4. That game, I still can. I love that game. So uh, Final Fantasy Final Fantasy Seven. Um, this is another thing. Parents back then didn't understand the concept of memory cards, so <laughs> every time I would start Final Fantasy Seven, I would play like an hour or two, get so far, and then I was like, okay, well, I just pick it back up, and it's like, do you want to save? You need a memory card. I was like, mom, dad, I need a memory card. They're like, what's that? <laughs> Oh, yeah, so, that's right, because, like, uh, PlayStations didn't come with one of those back in the day. Yeah. Unless you got some kind of, like, like combo deal one or something like that that the company put out or somebody else did. Like, you know, that, that's the thing. That's the thing, kids. Memory cards were a thing, and those things were, like, gold, and you better pray that you never lost them. Oh, yeah. Especially when they kept getting smaller and smaller with, like, the GameCube. Oh, God. GameCube. There's another... That is another system of droughts, but the games that came out from Nintendo were great. They oh yeah, great. Like, they, they they came out great. I mean, like every Mario Party was fun. Smash Brothers was great. F Zero was fantastic. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a, there was a lot of love put in these games. Even like games like Mario Golf, Mario Tennis. That te- that Mario Tennis is still unbeatable in my opinion. Like in in terms of like how fun it is. Like it can't be beat by any of the other ones because like, they just can't recapture the magic. And Mario Kart on there is beautiful. It's still great. Yeah. I love that game to death. But yeah, like I mean, I personally would love uh, if I if I could have gone back in the day and gotten a Sega Saturn, I probably would have asked for that for like it's like I have like a big difference between like my birthday and Christmas. So mm-hmm. I probably should have asked for like Christmas and my birthday for a Sega Saturn because there's not a lot on the Saturn that's that's good per se, but if you're a fan of fighting games. Oh yeah. Yeah, what you kids can understand is you know, it wasn't arcade port perfect, but it was pretty damn close. Because if you, because the best example, you play X Men versus Street Fighter in the arcade, and you love that game to death, and you want to get it on the home console. Well, most people had a uh, an original. Uh, they had a PS One over a Sega Saturn because the Saturn was a hundred dollars more than the PS One. Of course, uh-huh. everybody's gonna go for this brand new system because a lot of people also were tired of like what Sega had done in the past with like you know Genesis add-ons, the Sega CD, you know. 32x all that stuff um so you know you would go out and you'd get these things and you know would just uh what do you call it there like so you would you would get the game and you realized the game is underpowered the playstation one was actually a a, a, as as much of a powerhouse in some aspects as it was Mm -hmm. it was not good in others in fighting games it couldn't handle the tag mechanic in x-men versus street fighter Nope. Marvel versus Capcom one, same thing. And even when Marvel Superheroes was ported over, it was missing content. So if you wanted to, if you wanted the full arcade experience or at least close to it, the Saturn was the only way to go because that was that allowed you to have the tag system. It gave you everything, you know, and PlayStation was just watered down. And for some reason, X-Men versus Street Fighter, as bad as it is, is like over a hundred dollars complete in case. I don't even understand why. Yeah, it's so bad. Like I'm just waiting for it to get released on like consoles in the future. And I'm going to watch that shit fucking dive bomb in price. And then I'll snatch another <sighs> one up. I, Cause I got one for a good price a while back and everything. It doesn't have the case with it, unfortunately, but um, like, I mean the manual, but it's got everything else, but it was like 80 bucks. And I was like, I'll, I'll take it. I know this is going to be more, but yeah, like that was the thing. Like I, I love the Sega Saturn, man. That was, a, it was a great one. Uh, was there, was there really a console that like you didn't love that you got? Like, was there ever one where you were just kind of like, eh? Or was um, that the N64? No. Um, it actually wasn't. The, the console that I was kind of eh about was the, the Wii. Really? I was that way about the Wii because aside from Wii Sports and... Okay, correction, correction. Actually, no, scrap that, not the Wii. Wii U. Okay. The Wii U. That I, that the I reason, can understand more than the Wii. That, the main reason for that was because I literally, I mean, I have a whole collection. I have almost the complete collection for the Wii U. Nice. But the fact is, again, droughts, barely wow. any support. The OS was slow as shit. 
um, I often thought it was something I was doing to make it so slow. Yeah. Um, it just didn't seem like Nintendo knew what they were doing with that one. I mean, that should have been the console that dropped in 2006. It should have been that. Um, there are some great games. Like Nintendo first party games are great. Anything beyond Nintendo is like, eh? I mean, Ninja Gaiden I thought was really good. I played Ninja Gaiden Three Razor's Edge on the the Wii U. I loved it. Um, Mass Effect Three I played it on the Wii U, and then I went back and played it on 360. I loved it on there, even though it's not complete. It's missing a, a DLC on the Wii U, but I mean, it played good. A lot of games look good. Call of Duty looked good. But there was just no support. Like after the first six months, everyone pulled out. Kind of how it was, honestly. It really was. I mean, I, I love the console because it gave me a new Smash Brothers game and it gave mm-hmm. me Bayonetta 2 when nobody else would take the chance to fucking make it. Mm, that- yeah. That, like that yeah. for me was good. I mean, like obviously, I I loved um, you know Mario 3D World on it. There were yeah, like I said, like it was all the Mario things. But yeah, like they lacked third party support because they were just like, nah, we'll we'll do this ourselves. And it's just like, dude, no co- no company can really not like depend on their own shit. You need third party developers. I mean, like the Nintendo, the original one, obviously that was a big success, right? It saved the video game world as we know it. But if it didn't mm-hmm. have Capcom and Konami. And everything like that, and even to some extent, LJN, because like they handled a lot of wrestling <laughs> games and a lot of shit and a lot of shitty games that had big names in it. You know, that was the eighties. That was a different time. People didn't know how ga- bad games were gonna be. There was no internet to tell you this shit. So people would just go out and buy it. And even if it didn't, if it was like not working properly because of bad game design, nobody really returned shit because you wasted all this money on it. You're gonna fucking play it and try to beat it. Fucking LGN. (laughs) You can't mention the NES without LGN. That was the thing. Like, you know, you still had Capcom and Konami making all these things. And, you know, they Mm -hmm. did really good. And, you know, that's the thing. If you don't have that, your system will flop. And the Wii U did have some good. I mean, sorry, the the, the original Wii had some good support, I feel. Uh, There were a lot of good games on it. But with Miyamoto so obsessed with, like, you know, motion controls and not doing it the right way, you know, that was. That was again. The Wii was also very heavily underutilized. Yeah. Uh, for what it could do, motion controls. I mean, like things like Resident Evil: The Umbrella and Dark Side Chronicles, fucking fantastic. Mm-hmm. Amazing games to play on that shit. Um, actually, I'll be uh, from when the row does uh, Toys for Toss. We actually already kicked it off last week. Uh, but I think yeah, on the nineteenth, I'm actually playing The Umbrella Chronicles with uh, friends of mine. Ooh. Yeah, because uh, I haven't played that in a long time. Dark Side, like when Dark Side came out, Dark Side kind of like took over everything I loved because Dark Side was just infinitely better than Umbrella Chronicles. But there's some things I do like about Umbrella Chronicles. It's one of those things you can go back and replay, like at least once a year, possibly. But mm-hmm. yeah, like it just I understand about the Wii U. The, and, and the thing with it is, in my, in my personal opinion, I don't know if you agree with this, but the Wii U had to fail in order for the switch to succeed yes it was a prototype for it pretty much yep it really was with that with that tablet yep Hmm. interesting you're right it it had to it had to fail it had to humble nintendo it it really did i mean people failed if people failed to to remember nintendo was pretty arrogant for a while yeah they're like, yeah, well, we're going to do CDs, and guess what? You're going to buy it anyway. Because <laughs> we're Nintendo. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. I mean, I'm just, I'm just glad, like, we did get the games we got, and they did port it over to the Switch. I was really glad about that. Cause yeah. It was all, because that's the thing. As bad as some systems can be, there are still great games on there that you want to see in the future. Like, you look at something like... uh the second sound, let's use that for existence. I mean, I know Sonic R is a terrible game, but I fucking love that game. I I know it's terrible. I know it's bad, but I fucking I'm love not Sonic. judging you. Yeah. I'm I, not I, judging I, you. I, I, I gotta defend it in case any of like Sonic fans see this and everything like that, like I or hear this. I I love that game so much 
because I played it a lot on the Sega Saturn that my cousin had. And mm-hmm. back in like 2000, I remember like year 2000, I got like a, I got like my first PC uh, and I was down at Staples getting ink for the printer because I had to like do school shit and everything. I passed by like the CD rack of like games and stuff, and all of a sudden I see like this Sonic thing, and I'm like, "What the fuck? This? Oh my god, Sonic!" Because I never, I, I didn't get a uh, no. Technically, no. I had a Sega at that point, but I still saw it, and I was just like, "Oh my god!" So, uh, it came with Sonic and Knuckles, and no, it was, it was Sonic, Sonic and Knuckles, Sonic Three, and Sonic R. Mm-hmm. And I got to play Sonic R on my, and I. And because I was an idiot and didn't realize you could get a gaming controller for your PC, I was playing Sonic R on the fucking keyboard. <laughs> yeah, somehow I beat that game 100%. I got all the Chaos Emeralds, unlocked all the secret characters, all by using the fucking fucking directional pad and the space bar as a fucking uh, the jump button. I don't know how I did it. <laughs> um... I got a lot of fucking games like that, man. Like, I mean, like I said, I know it's bad, but I, I love it. But that's again, that's why I'm glad the Switch brings in a lot of the older games. I just wish they would revamp their store because I feel like there's so many shovelware. Like, this is like the Wii all over again. There's so many crap games that they drop on there. The organization needs to be a lot better than what it is. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You mean like, yeah, okay, yeah. Because I mean, yeah, the the... There is like there's a lot of like indie games on there, which is you know great for them because it's. But I'm like, man, I'm starting to feel like it's the Xbox 360 all over again. Yeah, a lot of indie games. I mean, like, I mean, you got to be bummed out about that too. The fact that like they don't release a lot of retro games anymore on the, the that free service, that free streaming service or whatever they got. No, it's not a free streaming service, but. Oh yeah, the Nintendo Online. Yeah, yeah that. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Nintendo, what the hell are you doing? Yeah, just, Why are they so behind? I don't understand. Like, Xbox allows you to do it. PlayStation allows you to do it. And you're making us pay monthly for a streaming service. You will literally probably, I mean, you, you might take a hit. But if you start putting out games and making them digital downloads like you did before with the Wii and Wii U, you're going to do fine. I mean, I, mm-hmm. I, 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 I wish there was a better way to get games uh, that work. You know, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I love. Don't get me wrong. You love a lot of the things for the online thing for the older games because you can play co-op with certain games. Because buddy of mine who I met on DeviantArt like over like uh, I think like eleven years ago, uh, mm-hmm. he lives out in I think he lives out in Wyoming now, but he always wanted to play Donkey Kong Country two with me because both of us love Donkey Kong Country. He I, mm-hmm. I love two more than I think he likes the first one more and I like the second one more. So two is the best, huh? Two is the best. I thought you said three is the best. I was like, get out. <laughs> no, three can suck a monkey's dick. <laughs> it, it pretty much did. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like that's why they captured Diddy, so they could just like do horrible things to him while I was in that floating barrel. <laughs> uh, oh my god, the, uh, Nintendo's gonna be like, all right, yeah, we never work with any of these guys. Put them on the list, right? <laughs> no, um. But yeah, we, we got to play Donkey Kong Country and we sat through and played through the whole game in one day. And it was so much fun to have that fucking feeling to be able to play with a buddy. Because uh, mm-hmm. I think I think DC, yeah, DCK2 is out now. Like you can get Donkey Kong Country 2 and him and I have got to make time to play that because everybody loved the first live stream we did of it. And it's it's things like that that I'm just like, Nintendo, if you are going to charge us online to get like have an online thing. Fine. I understand that. If you're going to start charging us for different downloads for each game, I will happily take that as long as they have online play. If that's what's included in that whole thing, I will gladly pay $5 for uh, a Nintendo game or $10 for a Super Nintendo and 20 for a GameCube. Like mm-hmm. you've got to step it up because if you don't, you're going to get left in the dust. People are going to start getting pissed because yeah, some of the games for the NES and Super Nintendo they've given are, are good, but a lot of them are just ones that we've already played to death enough and we want, like, other ones, and they don't really seem to want to work with third-party games either, or the companies. I mean, some of them they have. Like, I've seen them work with smaller ones, like, I think Taito games in there or something like that, but, like, if... I mean, they got Breath of Fire 1 and 2 on there from Capcom. Uh, it's mostly a lot of their own stuff, but I think that they, they need to understand that they need to do it, but 
unless you know Capcom is just like one day, hey, you know what? We're gonna allow a streaming service for you guys. Here you go. <laughs> like if that happened, I would fucking be so happy. Like I just you'd be able to play like all the rare Capcom games, like Cannon Spike. Mm-hmm. Just get to play that and shit. So good. But um, yeah, God, you can dream. I guess. <laughs> I mean, it would probably work better than Stadia would have anyway. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, don't get me started on Stadia. Yeah, yeah. That did you, did you, flaming turd. You, you didn't review that, right? No, they didn't. They, they, won't, they wouldn't ship to Hawaii because they say we don't ship to your country. What? Isn't it made in America? Mm-hmm. Then you're in the same country. <laughs> mm-hmm. Wow, they've wow, way to go. Way to go, Google. Like you done fucked up. <laughs> I tried to get get in there like, yeah, we don't uh we we don't ship to Hawaii, we don't ship to your country. And I'm like, my country. Uh I'm an American. <laughs> I mean, ser- you know, and the funny thing is the amount of people that don't know Hawaii is part of the US. I've come across that actually. Blows my mind. I'm like, really? You're like, yeah. Your country. I'm like, my country. Okay. Hawaii is like one of the most famous states, like in U and not even just US history, but world history. Mm-hmm. Like, if it wasn't for Hawaii, like World War II, we wouldn't have got dragged into it. Well, not, yep. not that it's not that it was Hawaii's fault. I just like completely blamed like all of Hawaii. It's like, yeah, you're <laughs> the reason why we got dragged into this war. And Japan's like, yeah, we're going to drop a bomb over here. They're not going to do anything. America's like, oh, my beer. <laughs> Wasn't that old comedian said, uh, was it, don't piss off Americans. We build monster trucks for fun. Piss us off and see what happens. Right? <laughs> and you think about it, it's like, oh, my God. They, yeah, they do, they do build monster trucks for fun. <laughs> we do. <laughs> oh, fucking Christ. But, um... Oh, all right, dude. Uh, so yeah, we're actually like fucking two hours into this. I was, I thought it was only going for like an hour, but. Oh really? Yeah, we're two hours into this. Holy shit! Oh, this is this is this is good. This is good entertainment. I almost said TV. I was like, no, nah, we're not on TV yet. <laughs> Have to be on HBO with all the f bombs I drop. <laughs> like the next Tony Soprano or something like that. <laughs> just dropping right? f bombs all the time and beating people up. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. Well, I don't know. It might get you in trouble in modern day. But. <laughs> it probably would. But uh, is there anything else you want to like uh, discuss, dude, before we wrap it up? Or um, I'm trying to think, what else is there? Anything that's happened recently? Um, like, do you got any like big reviews coming up yourself uh, for the for the people? No, I don't. I don't have anything. I didn't get a code. I'm not cool enough for a code from Cyberpunk. So oh, nobody was cool enough for that, right? Um, I don't. I, I don't have. I don't have anything. I have. Uh, the only thing I have coming up is I'm gonna have Matt McMuscles on my show. Oh, you were able to get Matt? Holy shit! Yeah, like he he actually followed me two days ago, and he sent me a DM. I was like, "Oh, what?" He's like, "Yeah." He's I saw. He's I, I checked out some of your stuff and. You know, some of the folks I know know you, and you know they say you're super cool. I was like, "Oh snap, we know you know people that know me." <laughs> you should have just been like, "Well, let me tell you right now, I'm actually not as cool as I sound." <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Prepare to be sorely disappointed, Mister McMuscles. Man, I, I'm I was shocked, but yeah, I've got that, and that's just about it, dude. I'm trying to to wind down. Like, I I feel like I've been going really hard the last couple months. Dude, and we've been going I'm, hard this whole fucking year, like. Okay, granted, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm I'm definitely feeling it more, mm. and I'm like I can't keep at this pace. And it's like we got the baby coming in three months. Oh, that's right! I forgot about that. Congratulations again for that, dude. That's crazy. Thank you, thank you. So, so she's gonna be here in three months, and I'm like I can't keep at this pace. <laughs> so. 
Um, how am I gonna do this going forward? So I'm trying to figure out what to do going forward. Let's um, I'll put the kid on stream with you. Everybody will love that. They'll be like, "Oh my god, he's got his daughter on stream!" Like all like the like the gaming moms are gonna be like, <laughs> "This is the greatest thing ever!" and stuff like that. And you just like holding there, like feeding her and everything, you know, right on stream. Right. People like are donating crazy amounts of money to you and shit. Could do that. I mean, if yeah. you, if you feel comfortable exporting your daughter for money, hey, you know, at some point. She got, she got, she got to, you know, pull her weight. <laughs> it's just like, you got to pull your weight. It's like, I'm three dad. No, no, dad, don't, no, 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 no excuse. Pull your weight. Let's mm. go. You know, them diapers don't pay for themselves. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, there's, there's, there's little kids out there that have YouTube channels and they're making more than like some of us. Yeah. Everything like it's, it's crazy. So, I mean, you know, <laughs> Your daughter could be the weapon that surpasses Metal Casanova or something. <laughs> it's just like it's like it's every it's every parent's dream to live off their child. It really, you know, it's, it's that we joke, but people, there's a lot of truth to that. <laughs> well, why do you think those freaking uh, what do you call those crazy dance moms try to do that shit to their daughters oh, and stuff yeah, to like fucking get they... money off that and everything and make their daughters stars and live off them? Yep. Yep. <laughs> like. Oh my and the god! Pa- the pageant mothers too. Oh my god! The, those women should be fucking sh- like, oh my god! They they should have their uteruses tied and never be allowed to breed again. They are terrible human beings. <laughs> like, oh my god, just so bad. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, dude, like, yeah, you've had a phenomenal year, and you're pretty much ending it like on a review with Matt Nick Muscles. And for those of you guys who want to watch the rest of his stuff, uh. You just actually had uh, Griffin on your uh, podcast recently. For the yeah, time. Just, uh, yeah. Um, he that's uh, that was a lot I wasn't expecting because I mean I'm cool with him, like you know we're friends and all, but I know he's busy. So like I was sh- I was expecting a no when I asked him, and he's like, oh no, dude. he's like, dude, yeah. Uh, when, he's like, well, when do you want to do it? I'm like, well, when works for you? He's like, oh, well, let's do this day. It's like, all right, cool. So we made it happen, and then um. I might have David Hayter back on. Oh maybe. man. I might. I don't I'm not certain at this point. Um, just because I know it's good. He's working on some stuff. And as much as I like Kojima, he did him dirty constantly trying to get rid of him. Yeah. Like it it, was, it started with MGS3, didn't it? Yeah. Actually, no, two. Really? They tried to do it in two. Yeah. He he's been wanting to get rid of him for a while. What, what was the reason? He he's just he's not who he envisioned Snake to be. He wanted um Kurt Russell, but he can never get Kurt Russell. I mean, he did get uh what's his name? Kiefer Sutherland. Yeah, he got him, which was crazy. <laughs> and people did not like it. I'm like well, you kind of brought that on yourself. Yeah, I mean, I I didn't like the idea of David Hayter not being Snake anymore, and that hurts when you're doing all of you know all these Metal Gear games for years, and people mm-hmm. love you, and your your voice is iconic for it and shit, and it's just like, you know, fuck, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean you know, keep yourself in. I think he did a good job, but he never spoke. <laughs> that was the thing like Kojima wanted like a veteran actor who could like have a wide range of emotions for like the face capture and everything and it's just like but he doesn't speak at all he didn't, he didn't say a damn thing no he didn't he, he, he <laughs> really didn't say yeah that's nothing against Kiefer Sullivan and everything like that it's just, it's just the role that he's written for and shit but um fuck man like oh, that'd be cool if you get him back though that, that'd be cool I mean I'm sure I mean he had a great time last time so why wouldn't he it was just, it was just interesting because like I was I, so I talked to him almost every other day like we text each other yeah and he's like <laughs> he's giving me shit he's like how come I haven't been back on sooner I'm like what well I'm I'm like well I, what are we gonna talk about he's like we can talk about anything I'm like well yeah that's true I'm like I don't want to abuse that I feel I don't know it, like I just feel that way sometimes like I don't want to abuse that when it comes to people like. 
I like even with like case in point with Ruben, I want to have him back on him and I, we talk about it all the time, but I, I just, you know, I just don't want to abuse that. Well, it's not so much abusing it if they actually want to come back, you know, like if they bring it up and everything, that's like all the more reason to like, let it be like, yeah, let's, let's fucking do it. You know, Ruben's always got interesting things to talk about. He never runs out of things to talk about. And that's so true. <laughs> yeah, whether it's space or aliens or working in the industry and shit like that, or even f- for fuck's sake, like even, uh, hell, you can even talk about that, that incident that he went to where like that, his car was shot at too. Yeah. That, uh, that, that'd be an uh, interesting topic to talk about. I know a lot of people who were like so concerned about that. Cause I know somebody like Devil May Cry fans and shit, but uh, yeah, dude, just don't ever feel like, I mean, if these, if these guys want to come back to you, that means you made an impression on them. And when it comes to this world of, you know, interviewing and, and reviews and stuff, if they want to come back and you didn't ask them clearly, they're not saying it to be nice. They're doing it because they want to. If you're texting them all the time and they're texting you, then it's okay. It's like I said, that's why like you're like Joe Rogan. You're just good with everybody and people want to come in. Even Joe Rogan's had people on his podcast numerous times, like Bill Burr and shit. Yeah. And stuff. So there's always something to talk about and everything. And you can make that happen. Like you can do it, dude. So don't feel like you're, you know, don't sell yourself short. Just bring them on and have a blast again, because sometimes just getting somebody back on another time is just all you need. And if it's no, and if it's somebody you've never spoken with, I mean, you know, you can be nervous when you haven't spoken to them before, but you're friends with these guys. So that's a whole different story. That's why I was able to get you on here so easy. Cause I knew you or anything. Cause like, <laughs> I knew we would, we already kick it off as friends and stuff. So on a podcast, it'd be perfect. I was like, when you want, let's do it. <laughs> yeah. You were like literally it's like, fuck yeah, I'm, 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 I'm down for it. Let's do this. So <laughs> like I said, man, just if these guys want like, cause that's the thing, right? That's something that you're also doing. Like you're not you're not doing it to build your brand, but you are building it. You're not do, like I said. You're not doing it to. You're not bringing them on just to build your brand, but you're doing it regardless. So yeah. companies are gonna see. Oh wow, he's you know David Hayter's been on here two times now. Oh my God, Ruben Langdon's back for a fourth time and everything. Like this is this is kind of crazy. Like you know all these kind of things that you you know you do that it's points to a board. Even if like you don't care about all these things it's still Mm -hmm. a resume that's the best way i can put it it's a resume for you that you've been building whether you want it to or not you've done these things you can be proud of them and it will help you in the future like i said you could you could i mean you got isaiah washington before movie tv star (laughs) yeah like he's been around you got him on your show so that could lead to bigger things you could get who knows in the future i mean like one day get anthony mackie on your show you could get someone else from the avengers you could get robert downey jr scarlett johansson maybe you you don't know and by just doing all these things and keeping at it and i i see it happening again i'm not saying that because we're friends when i when my friends have dreams i'm the first one they're like a parent to stop them and be like no 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 go for something a little bit more your speed you're 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 going for pipe dreams here Mm -hmm. (laughs) that's why i also don't have that many friends um (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, no i'm real like I, like I i love when my friends come to me for relationship advice and i'm like mm-hmm. why you're not gonna listen <laughs> you know what i'm gonna say <laughs> like i'm gonna tell you that the guy is nuts you shouldn't be with them and yet you're gonna stay for the next six months and torture yourself to try to fix them and it's gonna end horribly and then i'm gonna be there with food to feed you while you're crying after they've gone <laughs> That's usually how that turns out. Does the, that's that's how that turned out. I have a lot of experience. But it's, it's why like I'm kind of this way with when it comes to my friends and uh the ones out here, especially they're like, Oh, I love this guy or I love this girl, and I'm like, All right, they're like, well, what do you think of him? Don't do it. <laughs> Cause you can see this shit. You can see it a mile away. Oh yeah. But they refuse to, even though it's yep. like the same thing that they've gone, they've been through over and over and over and over. Um, mm. it's, it's just like, all right, you know, if you guys are going to call me up at four o'clock in the morning, crying and stuff like that, I'm starting the clock. So I'll, and I will send you the bill at the end of this. <laughs> My time is precious. <laughs> even though I don't sleep. What is sleep? I don't need sleep. <laughs> 
<laughs> but uh yeah no dude again uh, thank you for coming on and just like just keep kicking it like you do man just keep getting all these people and just keep reaching out to these companies and you know companies that may not have worked with you before because you didn't have the numbers they'll be knocking at your door which they've already done that before if i'm if i'm not mistaken uh, a few of them have yeah the 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 one that i'm kind of the most sad about is nis america because they were the first ones to give me the opportunity and then you know I got canceled, ah. but it, it, which it shouldn't bother me. I was talking to Ruben about that. He's like, I shouldn't let it bother me, but it's like, I just have a sense of loyalty because they were the first ones to give me a chance and for it to go. And I think, you know, I, you and I, we talked about that too. Like mm -hmm. how that whole situation went down. Like that really, that messed with me for a while. It did. It really did that and i think the the other situation with someone else we both know like that one really messed with me but um but yeah you know um if there's anything i, I want to say to people you know watching or listening is that hey you know embrace your dreams go after it because you never know uh but go about it smartly yes go about it smartly don't think you're gonna just throw away everything that you've been doing just to go and pursue something work towards it let everything you do be something to work towards that goal because you know not everything pans out the way it does especially in this day and age oh yeah yeah like i mean like you, you know like because you didn't you didn't leave your job right off the bat you were grinding it out at that job and killing yourself and doing youtube before you decided to leave full time and you had already had like you had amassed your following you were doing you know your podcast and stuff and then you were just like i can leave this job now yeah does it work out i don't know but at least you had like fallbacks and stuff that's what a lot of people do like i mean i did restaurant work for years before i went full-time photography and while well, i was i was doing photography while i still did jobs at the restaurant which was great because you know restaurant they're just like oh yeah just you know give us like a week's notice before you to take something off or whatever if you got events and stuff and you know we'll be fine with that you know and so you have room to work but you know guys just do your research whatever you're gonna jump into first make sure that you have you know just just have fun with it at first if you want to try to make it into something work hard when it comes to that a lot of people say don't go all out when it comes to buying like a lot of expensive equipment and i was just like well don't buy bad equipment um which is why you also yeah. should follow mikhail here because he has a <laughs> lot of good tech tips and videos on microphones and webcams that you would need for starting off you that new microphone I, you reviewed dude i like that thing i was just like shit maybe even i'll buy one of those even though i don't really need it i was shocked at how good it was yeah because you know most usb microphones are shit they, they like, really are this, i'm like this is 50 bucks and it's it sounds this clear i'm actually using it now yeah like it's it's coming clear like this whole fucking time so you know that's the thing and you get good video and good audio quality and you put on a good show whether it's streams and stuff like that i, I tell a lot of people if you really want to do anything you got to get into streaming is the way to go right now instead of like youtube per se uh, unless yeah. you want to stream on youtube yeah okay question before we go i know we're supposed to wrap this up no, that's fine Qu question um what are your thoughts on streaming on youtube I think that streaming on YouTube is really hard to do if you don't already have an established fan base or a following. I feel that like, cause like with Ro, right? We've got, mm -hmm. we, we just hit 200 K on, on Ro recently. Mm -hmm. And when we do, and now that started to pick up in our, in our live streams, we usually only get like anywhere between like, I think like 300 to 400, I think it is. Mm -hmm. uh, which is good that's still good and you know people donate to the team and everything like that they're always you know coming in and joining and laughing along with us and stuff it's great but if ro had started doing streams right from there and we only had like a thousand followers it would i don't think it would have done as good um i think twitch is might honestly be the easier way sometimes i don't know it's very weird i i i, I do twitch because i feel twitch is a lot easier because my youtube channel it does not that good unfortunately uh because of the algorithm mm -hmm. and shit like that but i also have had this account for like nine years so i don't know how many of the accounts i do have are actually still active and stuff um where twitch it just seems people can come and go and stuff youtube it just seems 
harder to grow if you don't have an established fan base. So like if I, cause I've only got like 1,700 followers, uh, subscribers on YouTube. So if I mm-hmm. was to do it from there, I just don't think it would work that good. But Twitch uh, is where I do better for me personally. I, th- I think it's all kind of personally, like, like again, like where you've established yourself. I don't know, how's it work for so, you? Cause like you've done both. So I was doing really well with streaming on YouTube until they started fucking me over with demonetization like just for breathing like yeah. oh this motherfucker blinked demonetize his ass so it got to that part where like i just it was not viable and so you know i liked it but the one thing i dislike about streaming on youtube is it clutters your channel like oh that's right jj told me about that if you stream one night and then upload a video like the next day or day after your videos could tank yeah it tanked my channel actually Mm. so like now i'm lucky if i get 50 or 100 views sometimes or if i get a thousand or a couple thousand i don't know what i'm doing before i guarantee was getting over a thousand views no matter what the video was but then when i started streaming on the same channel i started tanking my channel heavily so like i moved it from youtube to twitch i i dabbled with mixer i'm glad i didn't stick with mixer um i love twitch i love the streaming community there i love being able to meet new people but uh twitch is not easy for discoverability you got to do a lot of extra legwork to get people with eyes on you yeah um i know the whole thing with facebook and i mean we're not going to I'm not going to touch on that, but like the thing I showed you earlier, but oh, like yeah. Facebook, Facebook gaming, um, I just feel like that's going to be the next mixer. You think it's going to like start like blowing up a little bit, but then kind of just implode on itself? Yeah. And that thing I, that I showed you, I think that's not going to. Right. I just don't see because Facebook as it is, is a dying platform. That's what I keep trying to tell people, but people don't don't listen to me. They just they keep sticking with it. I'm like, Facebook is gonna die. Yeah, it's been around. I mean, this long, which is a long time, and you know, it's it destroyed MySpace, and yeah. Facebook comes along, and it's the only game in town. And you know, a lot of people are getting sick of well, like one because of all the bullshit that comes with uh, Facebook and yeah. everything like that. Like you know, people can easily like steal your pictures and put go, like post is you and when you even have proof facebook's just like oh yeah we don't know if this is you or not and you can't talk to a human because it's just all run by fucking machines mm-hmm. and i personally wouldn't do facebook gaming i know some friends of mine have tried it and they actually had pretty good success at it but uh after a while they really started to see a dip and i was just like mm-hmm. that's how it works like it's just they're trying to get everybody in and you know it's only a matter of time before facebook gaming tries to absorb big time uh, YouTubers or like big time streamers. They're going to be like, Hey, we'll pay you to stream over on this channel. Like, like look at Ninja. Like when he, when he got the thing for mixer, he went to mixer mm-hmm. and I, I guess he never really even streamed. Barely. He, yeah. He barely streamed. He got like, what was it? Like $6 million and he didn't even do his job. Can I have that job? I mean, I, I worked a job one time where I didn't know what I was doing at it for six months and I got paid, but I didn't get paid $6 million. <laughs> Dude, he got, paid oh yeah and then got to go back to twitch <laughs> right he made it like a fucking bandit and it's just like you know it's it's like it's like he went to the the it's like when you leave an ex like a, like a girlfriend thinking that the one the, the next one's gonna be better but then you realize you made mm-hmm. a terrible mistake and you go back to the one that was actually good to you yep it's actually the best way to put that relationship <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> like, yeah i don't know i i mean yeah like you said like it's harder to get traction on youtube but you know if you do streaming on i mean, sorry if you do streaming on youtube while doing what we do it's also hard because your work will tank and yeah. twitch is just hard to get noticed i will say twitch what i do like about twitch is one they do they give you more options than youtube does first off you can actually mm-hmm. clip stuff on youtube on twitch there's no clip option and hate that. Cause like when JJ and his, uh, and the guys are streaming and stuff like that, if I'm not there, or I come in late and stuff like that, or I can't make a stream. I still watch it. And I would love to clip the funny shit that happens in it, but YouTube doesn't let you. 
and also like raids and all that stuff you know, like raiding people and hype trains yep. for like subs and stuff you know you don't get that really with youtube sadly you don't and they don't youtube's not even trying that's yeah that's the thing they're not trying and mm -hmm. you know they might not have mixer to worry about anymore but at one point youtube also has to realize shit we are a dying platform because we fucked over everybody mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty much how it goes that's what they did but you know they'll they'll see when they start losing more money and i don't know, like Pornhub makes a second like channel called like you know you hub or something and it's like an offshoot of porn <laughs> and, you know, all the creators are like yeah you know what you know you want to you want to play copyrighted music <laughs> go ahead and everything we're not gonna fucking care anything oh yeah we're, oh you're doing you're doing charity work and stuff like that i eh, don't worry about it. we're not gonna take because that's what fucking youtube does and i hate that shit like if you do charity streams they still mm -hmm. take the fucking money yep like that that is something that pissed me and the row guys off because when we do toys for tots every year we forgot about that we're like we are literally going through like a legitimate company to help children and you got the balls to take 50 percent of our earnings like it was bullshit jj's uh boss though he always came through in a clutch and he would actually match whatever was taken out by youtube he would put mm -hmm. back in anything so nobody like you know the kids never lost money thankfully uh but it just made us work harder on these streams to like you know to help the kids and stuff and it was great that like you know they all got this but um it's ridiculous I, I, there is that. a way now though to do it i i, I think that I, I saw it in our group chat or something like that so like that won't happen anymore i think there is a, like a legit way to go through youtube for like charities now because mm -hmm. i'm like i'm sorry like you're you're taking money from charity the thing you were told never to do as a child when you went around to like collect for orphans and everything else to like when your school made you do all that stuff or sell candies for homeless uh, kids or get them clothing or whatever the case may be like you as a big time company are stealing from children everybody's just like yeah well they got a business to run motherfucker youtube has money they've got scrooge mcduck money pin money like get out of here mm -hmm. susan what's her name susan is it which not not wachowski <laughs> uh, what whatever her name is susan yeah. mama susan she got the money oh she got the money <laughs> all right but yeah i think uh we'll call it here for tonight so uh dude uh thank you again so much for coming on today i know this is a lot longer than I originally thought but that's what makes these things so damn fun Hey, I had a blast, man. I I lost track of time. <laughs> <laughs> I had a little thing on OBS, like with a record thing next to it, and I was like, "Oh yeah." <laughs> so, uh, would you want to let people know that they can find you? I'll include those links down below, and obviously, you guys on the screen when you see this when it goes up, you'll be able to see it. But uh, plug, uh, yeah, plug yourself away, dude. All right. Well, you guys can catch me. Um, I'm on YouTube. Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. No, I don't dance on TikTok. <laughs> Facebook, um, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm on all the platforms. It's Mikhail Casanova across the board. So whatever, you know, the site you go to, just look up my name. It's universal. Um, you, you can catch it, my you find it. E literally. <laughs> Uh, the central hub you can just go to like michaelcasanova.com it uh, basically route you to everything that I'm doing but uh, yeah so I'm um, you know you can catch uh, the Casanova podcast number one Hawaii number one Pacific I uh, do brand new episodes every single week every single Monday sometimes I'll do two or three episodes a week like this week I've got three but uh, on available on every major podcasting platform so just look it up and other than that um yeah i just i had a blast it just i hope you guys enjoyed it i mean just two friends shooting the shit for it only feels like it's been an hour i it's been three uh two hours and 33 minutes and 33 seconds it only feels like it's been an hour <laughs> see See, see, this is what happens when you get two friends just talking. We can just shoot the shit for hours. Yeah. No, I, I had the same thing like uh, with uh, with buddies of mine. Like we had a um, really a fighting game uh, podcast. I think that was like episode three or something for for my mm -hmm. for my show. And I I think that one ran three hours or something like that. I think that one was literally like that was like literally three hours. I think that was because it was me, uh, my buddy Jeff, and uh, my buddy Curtis, the one that I played uh, Donkey Kong Country with that I told you about. Um, mm -hmm. 
like that was um that was one hell of a time because like uh, i think we were almost gonna split that into two parts because it was getting so long because our buddy jeff he's gone to like evo and he's met a lot of the uh the people out there and stuff Mm -hmm. um like he's met like justin wong and all those Uh, he actually i actually he sold me his daigo stick he actually had daigo sign a fight stick and i own that now oh yeah i know justin i Oh, shit, I forgot I interviewed him a while back. <laughs> and he was actually out here for um the because I, I helped run um, one of the tournaments uh, out here. Yep. Uh for video gamers Hawaii. Like I helped them out and uh I was able to get Justin. He was actually out here on vacation. I was able to get him to come through and be there for a bunch of our tournaments. But yeah, he's he's super chill. That's what I've been told. Yep. Oh, there it is. I just, I just pulled it up. Yep. Uh, episode. Oh, episode four. Uh, fighting games. Uh, three hours. Yeah, it was like three hours because we were talking about that and like esports and all that shit. So this is actually the second longest podcast at this point because my the the one that was before this that was pretty long was uh, the one I do with my friend. That was two hours and four minutes. And then after uh, before that one was the uh, Dark Starkers one with a buddy of mine out. Uh, he's a cosplayer. That was an hour and thirty minutes. And then oh, the Power Ranger one. Yeah, that was um that I did with my buddy who's the Chrono Ranger and Power Rangers Unworthy. That was two hours and 19 minutes. So yeah, this is the second longest one. So can we get a new Dark Stalkers already? Can we please go Jamie Capcom? Fuck! <laughs> For real, man. Like, why the hell have we not gotten a new one? I, I feel that... I mean, like, I know, surprisingly, Samurai Showdown sold very well because they're getting another season of it, apparently. Yeah. Which is good. But I think that that was maybe, may have been a fluke. I feel that if like they brought Darkstalkers and even something like Rival Schools back, I mm-hmm. think it's they've been gone for so long that they wouldn't sell. I could see that. I would be very afraid. They would literally okay, first off, Darkstalkers could not be a 3D fucking like they could not do Street Fighter 4 and Street Fighter 5 graphics. If you do that, you will effectively fucking kill the franchise at that point. It needs to be sprite based, like how King of Fighters, uh, what was it like 12 or 13 on the PS3 at 360 was? Like the mm-hmm. hand drawn sprites, or like how Guilty Gear or Dragon Ball Fighters looks. That is where the fucking characters will shine the most. If they have that old pixel style of the hand drawn stuff that uh, Arc Systems uh, Works does. If yeah, you, they'd, if, they'd if be you the only that, way. It'll work. Now, it, rival schools might work in the Street Fighter V style if they clean up the style of Street Fighter V. Maybe. Uh, I hope six. I, I I wish it, six would go with a realistic art style. Thank you. Why? If, okay, finally, somebody who agrees with me. Everybody's just like, "You're fucking nuts, dude!" And I'm like, "Eat my ass." The like, proportions of the characters in five just ridiculous. Thank you. Oh my god! Right? Like, fuck, man! Like, I Rashid's hands are bigger than his fucking face. Yeah. Like Chun Li's hands are fucking huge. It's like she reached into a beehive and pulled it out after getting stung. Is it me or is her bus getting bigger every single game she's come out in since two? Oh yeah, her Cammy. They're they're do they're doing that. It's it's obvious that they are. Like I'm just like, all right, guys, like tone it down a bit. Like like I said, the realistic. I saw what that that old one from Street Fighter Five like beta picture that like a couple of those pictures that popped up years ago. Mm-hmm. That proved that it can work. Because here's the thing, right? Um, We could have definitely... Like, Street Fighter is an an evolving series. The Street Fighter 2 series has has the same style. They just update it a little bit as time goes on. And then you get the anime style of the Alpha games. Then you get the really cool, like... It's still anime, but it's still really, like, hand-drawn. Slightly, like, a a mixture of Alpha 1... uh, Sorry, Street Fighter Alpha and the Street Fighter 2 series. And it moves... The characters move more fluently on screen. The animation is very mm-hmm. fluent and solid. And so every era of Street Fighter, they seem to change. And that's fine. That's why they should mm-hmm. try the realistic route, because they've tried Street Fighter 4, uh, Street Fighter Cross Tekken, and Street Fighter 5. They've tried all these styles, and they just don't look good. So it's time to try a more realistic approach. Yes. And if they do and that, they I'll be happy. They need to do it now. They need to do it now. Well, I mean, obviously, that's why like we're getting another season of Street Fighter Five because they probably realized uh, that six, if it came out looking like they planned it, then it probably was just like, yeah, we need to really think about this because they it took them time to recoup that money from uh, Street Fighter Five. Mm-hmm. It sold what they wanted to at one point, but it was like a year later or something like that. It took. 
That game was rough. It was. I love it, but it's rough as fuck. And it's still hard to get matches online too, which is ridiculous. I supposedly uh, PS5 it works better. I, mean, I, don't, I don't have a PS5, so I can't. I I don't know. <laughs> I've had zero luck. Really? It's. I don't get it. Like I still sit and wait. Like freaking how long? I think the last time it took me like. 13 to 25 minutes for one match. Mm. So that's that's yeah. nuts. They need to, they need to fix it. Yeah, uh, let's hope that in the future they they wake up because Capcom's Frank Division is the only thing that needs to change. We think. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah. But uh, with that being said, yeah, we're, we're we got back on track of more topics. Fuck yeah, hell yeah, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. But again, uh, dude, thanks again for coming out. I greatly appreciate it, man. Definitely, man. Let me know if you uh, you want me to come back on anytime. Oh, I definitely think that's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> we'll definitely get into more. Like we can like uh, now that we've interviewed you and people know who you are, we can definitely get into more like gaming issues like that are out there, like with companies and stuff. We can get more in depth with that next time with more time. Okay. Yeah, Definitely. Cool. All right. So with that being said, guys, uh, I appreciate you guys all uh, tuning in as always. Please like and subscribe because it's free. And in this day and age, free is a damn good thing. So with that being said, uh, my name is One Big Boss, and see you all next time. Take care. Peace. <laughs>